one. Good afternoon and welcome to the City Council meeting of April 6th. Four. Oh, I apologize. Uh, April 4th. I will ask that you all rise and join us in the singing of O Canada. Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command with glory. Hearts, we see the right to north strong and free from far and wide. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Well, thank you to our very own Tennille Towns for singing uh, o Canada and to the National Film Board for the images of our country. Moving on to the adoption of the previous council minutes, I have Councillor Thiessen in the queue. Thank you very much, Mayor Clayton. I would move that council approve the minutes from the city council meeting held on, oh gee, sorry, I was opening up my e-scribe. Well, we know when the last council. March 21st. Oh, March 21st, two weeks ago, as presented. Thank you for that, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, that motion is in order. Call the question. O'Toole in favor. O'Connor in favor. And Tyson in favor. And Bosch, does anybody have their East Cry? Good job, John. Okay. All right. So we'll just give it a minute for everybody to try to get back into their e -scribe. In the meantime, moving on to the adoption of today's agenda. I will look to Councillor Thiessen again. Thank you. There we go. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I would move that uh, Council approve the agenda for today as presented. That motion is in order. I'm unaware of any additions, so I will call the question. And that carries unanimously. Moving on to our delegation portion of today's meeting. I will just remind those of you who are watching, if you are interested, you are more than welcome to attend the 3 p.m. session of any council meeting without letting us know ahead of time. If you do, however, uh, wish to attend the evening portion, there is a form online that you can fill out. It's very simple. It's just to give us a heads up that you're coming. However, you don't need to let us know you're coming to this portion. Uh, it is appreciated if you're able to, but not necessary. So moving on to delegations, and I know we have a couple. I have lost my e-scribe now, just because I was making fun of you guys. So um, I know we do have a couple delegations. And uh, Ms. Nancy Rosendale is first on our agenda. Thank you for that. I, I, Ms. are you Ms. Nancy? Come on up, sit at the table. Just for those of you who are watching, or for those of them who are watching, please introduce yourself. And then five minutes of presentation time, then there will be an opportunity for council to ask you questions. Uh, and, uh, and then we will go from there. So thank you for coming, appreciate it. Okay, my name is Nancy Rosendale, and I am a born and raised uh, local resident of the Avondale area. My husband and I built our house in the Avondale area on the Bend by the Elks Hall, which is in a restricted residential area. And the reason we are here today is for a few reasons. The first being that on March the 14th, we received a letter from the city uh, regarding a business development permit for the property adjacent to our house. The letter was dated March the 8th, but we did not receive it until the 14th of March. And a response had to be into the city by March the 22nd. 
Immediately upon receiving the letter, I contacted uh, Tannis Fletcher, the development officer, regarding our concerns that we just got the letter on the 14th by mail to get it in by the 22nd was very highly unlikely. And um, her response to our uh, concern was that there was two weeks given from the 8th to the 22nd. She has no control over the postal, even though I said to her something to the effect that uh, there is no magic postal ferry that can deliver it in that amount of time. She said legally they had to give us the two-week notice, and so 8th to 22nd is two weeks. We received three letters from the city regarding this business development uh, letter and, uh, and the issues that were going on. And the first letter took seven days to reach us, the second five, and the third six. So what we're wanting the city to do is look at changing something so that there is a factor for postal time to go to the residents if they have to respond. And uh, considering that, you know, it takes time to put together your thoughts and concerns about a business development permit time at the end, however they want to factor that in. Because we, you know, seven days and in that amount of time that was left, there was a weekend. So how do we actually get our concerns into the city? The second point was when we actually did give our requests into Tanis and our concerns, not all of our concerns were addressed by the city. Uh, she did address the biohazard concerns because there was a, a proposed dental hygienist business that was going to go in the house beside of us um, that was up for sale. And so she addressed the parking, the signage, and the biohazard. Our concerns were not all addressed nor were my other neighbors' concerns all addressed. So we feel that if we put in our concerns to the city, each and every concern should be addressed as to why it would be valid or invalid in the city granting a business development permit to the resident or to the applic applicant. Uh, and another point was that when I did speak to Tannis on the 22nd regarding the fact that every single resident was opposed to this permit being granted, that uh, she said that it that the city had to give the permit if it met the bylaw requirements, which indeed was not correct information. When I spoke to her on the 22nd, on the 24th, she sent me an email which stated that the bylaw says you may refuse the application even though it meets the requirements of this bylaw, which was section 18.1B double I, however you go that one. So fortunately, our next door neighbor is not only our neighbor, but it's our friend. And the lady that did the application for the permit used that she was looking for financing for the date of March 22nd, not the fact that she was waiting for the city permit to be granted to her. So fortunately, our next door neighbor talked to the real estate and canceled the sale of his house, which we are very thankful for because we now do not have to have a dental hygiene business next door to our house. And finally, we would like to sort of know what the city is actually considering as a home business because every single person that we spoke to said a hygiene business, that's a home business. So we're sort of looking for guidance because we couldn't find anywhere where it says these are the criteria for actually um, calling something a home business and then granting a permit. So I would like to thank you for your time today in listening to our concerns and maybe hoping to amend some of the policies of the city and possibly changing the bylaws so that we can have uh, residents that sort of have uh, expressed their concerns and when every single resident is opposed to a business development permit and the city does have discretion that maybe there is some consideration or not granting that permit. Thank you. So thank you for that. Now I'll just remind Council of time for questions uh, for Ms. Rosendale. When we come to the delegation portion on our agenda, we can ask uh, administration questions and, and go through that. But if you could just stick around for a couple minutes in case there's a couple questions. I do have one councillor in the queue and I also had a question myself. So Councillor Bosch. Thank you, Mrs. Rosendale, for coming today. It's not easy to bring your concerns, but uh, definitely... Um, worth the time. I have to tell you, I absolutely understand the experience that you're going with in, in many occasions. And 
I would, I don't know if it'll happen. We'll do our best, but um, that that week of the mail um, is an issue for sure. And and you're not the only person who has faced this. So please know that we do understand what what you're going through and how to resolve it is you know Plan B. But you know, just that you know you're heard. Thank you. All right, uh, Councillor O'Toole. Yeah, thanks very much for being here today. I appreciate it, and I'm sure all council does. Can you just describe your house and where it's located on that street? Okay, our house is located on the right on the bend before the Elks Hall, which is sort of like on a blind corner. And some of the concerns that we had was the fact that right now there's a, a young person that lives in the neighborhood that gets dropped off, dropped off by the, a school bus who cannot actually get... Be, dropped off on that corner because it's not a great place for the bus. So we already told the city about the traffic issue and the parking and the, you know, the safety concerns that we had. So adding a business traffic, however they do it, would add more problems already to our neighborhood corner. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, I just had a question in regards to the correspondence that you received from the city. Was there an email option for you to express your concerns? Yes, there was an email option uh, to express our concerns. However, in speaking to some of our neighbours, some of the neighbours do not actually use email. And so since I am retired and have the opportunity to come during the day, I decided to come. But the neighbours also did not receive those letters the same they, they got theirs actually after my, me. I had already gone to the neighbors and they still had not gotten their, their actual letters. Mine was dated and I received it on the 14th, but they still had not gotten theirs on the 14th. And as Councillor Bosch mentioned, uh, for sure Canada Post, we know since they removed their sorting and distribution locally, it really hasn't impacted our local um, service. So yeah, it's unfortunate. I see Councillor Lerner's in the queue. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, hi, Nancy. Hi there, how are you? <laughs> good. I see you on the trails with yeah. the dog, so that's good. To, um, so, I'm not sure in this application, and it's been a while, but is there was there a requirement for a public posting on on this on this lot as well? Like, did they have to put up a sign saying well, they're trying to get uh, this is what's happening? Do you know? There was no sign. I only found out about it because I got the letter from the city. The actual owner of the house, our neighbor, was totally unaware that a business development permit was being granted for the person who wanted to purchase that house. So I didn't even know that there was an appeal because I didn't get the second letter until the 28th of March, which stated that there was an appeal up to April 13th. So that's on the 28th of March, and the and the permit was granted on the 22nd. So on the 28th of March, I got a letter from saying they had granted the permit and that we had till April 13th to do an appeal process. So we sort of had already felt when I had pre previously emailed and talked to Tannis that it was a done deal no matter what we had said about our concerns, permit granted, done don't care about the neighbors because none of our issues had been really addressed or I shouldn't say none. It's only a few of our issues that we were, our concerns had been addressed. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Berg. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. So Nancy, can you summarize again, outside of Canada post where, where in the process, the city lets you down that you feel that we need to improve upon? Providing information that was correct, for example, about the that section 18 point, whatever the numbers was I just said, um, in that the city actually has the ability to refuse a permit. So when I asked Tannis about, okay, you have approved this, but every single neighbor adjacent that would have received this letter and other neighbors who did not receive the letter all are opposed why is this permit being granted when the whole neighborhood says no we gave reasons about crime watch and on and on goes our list of whatever nobody came to us and said this is has no material effect on our decision making process that 
this point, this point, this point. Only this, this, and this are what we're concerned with. So that's where we feel we're let down as neighbors. And also the fact that we do not know what really is a home business. Like anybody we talk to, when you say a dental hygiene in a house, they're like, what? We, we can't find anywhere where the city gives the criteria as to what they are actually deeming a home business. Okay, thank you. Councillor Thiessen. Yeah, thank you very much, Mayor Clayton. Uh, thanks for coming in today, Ms. Rosendale. It's been a long time since Bio 30. Um, but uh, it's good to see you again. I'm very familiar with where you live and, and the area. And actually, when I read when I read your, your letters, I was quite surprised that we we're going to put in a home business along that strip because it seems like it might be a dangerous area for people to back in and out of uh, with the roads. Um, I guess uh, just a comment. I just wanted to say thank you for, for coming and bringing this to our attention. Uh, maybe just a comment for, for our administration that I think if we're aware that the Postal Service is down and out and we have a discretionary development permit going through for home-based business or otherwise, that we should be aware and maybe get it out like a week earlier so that Canada Post can do their sorting and then get it to the people on time so you have the, you have the time to respond and to understand what you're responding to if you object to it. And, uh, and yeah, so I think, yeah, I think what you're bringing to light is that our processes, maybe just in communication through development, need to be improved upon a bit, and whether that's hand-delivered or mail-delivered, like we've got to make those extra steps. So thanks for coming in today and addressing this. Thank you. All right. So thank you again, as everyone said, for coming today. Uh, just so you know, our delegation business is done at the end of this portion. So there are some items of business. You're more than welcome to stick around and listen. Uh, if not, uh, we will follow up with you following uh, any direction or decisions, discussions that happen at the end of this portion. I would suggest that it'll probably be about um, five o'clock-ish that we'll get to delegation business. So you're more than welcome to stick around or you can leave and, and we'll follow up with you. Okay, thank All you right. very much for your time. No, thanks for coming. All right, uh, next on our agenda, delegation business, uh, we have Mr. Fraser. Welcome, sir. Please, just for those who are watching, if you could introduce yourself. And then again, five minutes, council will have an opportunity for questions. Thanks. May I get you to read that, what I put down on paper here? Yeah, absolutely. Please. So Mr. Fraser on his document said that uh, he's an elder from Kelly Lake who would like to set no, up a... I'm not. No, sorry, that's wrong. Okay. But I do have an elder from Kelly Lake Okay. That will supply. Okay, so you are aware of an elder from Kelly Lake who would like to set up a healing tent, uh, and you would like to speak to the issues of, um, of hurt and impact. Um, the changes you would like to see are the reduce the dependence on the RCMP intervening with people in the park. Is that correct, sir? Well, it, it, it uh, went away from the layman's terms. Okay. We have a problem on the streets. I, I work usually in the summer for Rico Trenching, so I'm in the sewers. I, I know what's going down the dumps of this city. And I've been walking around just, just outside of our fence here that's getting ripped apart and it's breaking my damn heart. It's our children that are dying. I just, I'd love to set up a tent, but I want to go buy it the legal way. I want to rent a piece of land from the city. I will give you a permit or a, the, what are the legal, um, I, I need a, a lease, a rent lease. And I have two ideas of where and one of them will put the city on the map if we deal with this right. And it's a very, it's a touchy issue. The natives, a healing tent. The government could freeze my bank account right there now. I see what's going on in my city and I don't like it. John, you should come down and see the people there. They got three needles in their hands and they're shoving one in their arm. Meanwhile, his buddy just got up and he's got shit running down both legs. And John, I lost a stepson to the drugs. I got grandchildren growing up in my yard. I got a farm. I, God has blessed me. I got grandchildren growing up in my yard and 
I want to take them to the city and show them this. I've been looking at your names and I appreciate the wisdom that I see here. O'Toole, C uh, Connor, we're from the old country. I, I don't know what to say. It's, this has got to be a, a serious decision in you, every one of your hearts because it, this ship could go over. The place I'd like to set up a teepee and a big one is right, right across the road from the sundial between Caltire and the new hospital. And the only thing that's a little further on is the church I attend, Peoples. And last week, well, we have a few animals on our farm. They asked us to bring the animals in. I was going out with Pastor Nelson trying to get people, well, I was trying to get them out of the parking lot because the parking lot was packed, both ends, and the street was packed. And the more people that I tried to get out, the more people parked along the road. Do you know that there was very few of them that were white, like me? A lot of them were a lot of different cultures. And they all had a damn smile on their face because people are opening up, cracking jokes. We need that. We need some healing in our land. I'm just asking for a teepee to be put up. I got the teepee. I got lots of elders. That's, that's not it. When I have to walk the street, John, with a friggin' pocket knife beside me, just in case somebody does pull a knife on me, I don't like that. That's... I would love your opinion. That's all I'm asking. And if your opinion goes with what I, I sort of see, I guess, I would like a, a permit for maybe more than one piece of land. But you know this summer, we're going to have a lot of tents down there. And we're already supplying them with the drugs. Clothing? I could drive on clothing that gets wasted from my farm to, to the city here. We don't need a clothing drive. Food drive. I've watched food fights. Uh, well, right behind here. There's lots of food. You wouldn't believe the buildings in this town that packed with food. It's sick. The government, we're in the land of milk and honey. I drive Highway 40 like a raped ape every once in a while. I'm into the oil patch. Like, there's money here. And there's a lot of wealthy people. I shut up. Well, first, thank you, Mr. Fraser. I appreciate you coming here today and appreciate your passion. You're obviously very engaged and, um, I'm walking away. you know, and, and you're really proud of your community, but you really are asking for help. So I appreciate you coming here. Um, if you could just stick around for a little bit longer and allow council to ask you some questions, that would be appreciated. Yep. Councillor Bosch. Hi. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fraser, for coming. Yes, your passion is evident, and we appreciate that you uh, came to speak to us. It does take a village, and um, community care is important to you. It's, it's obvious. It is to us, too. My question to you is, have you spoken to anybody in with the Friendship Centre who would have knowledge on perhaps how to get this done, or programming, or... Um, what they identify as the same needs, perhaps, as you see? I have gone to the Catholic Church and prayed with the priest, the new feet. I love him. He's, he's right on track. I have gone to uh, Rise and Above, um, Mel Sigical. I've prayed with him. Um, they got a six-week waiting period which is to the good, because if you really want healing, then you're going to sweat a little. And that's, I love what they're doing. Yeah, they're, um, I can tell you the Friendship Center is an amazing place. I was over there. Oh, you were? OK. Yes, I had a, I was sitting down with Richard. He's there every day. He takes soup home to his place. And he's very wealthy. But he's part of the, no, no, he's, he's part of the, uh, the culture there. I have sat in front of the Friendship Center, and I don't need to be begging on the street, but I sat in front and I had a bowl of food from there. And I've seen what people, I, 
Yes, I have gone around. Excellent. Sorry. I think, you know, there may be just some connection pieces that we can help each other with. Um, yes, I want your opinion. And I would like a permit for a piece of land. That's the biggest. It's a, it's a, how would I say, not political, but uh, yeah, not political. John, help me out on this one. It's a, cover my ass so the government doesn't come and take my farm because I would like these natives to stay here for three months or whatever, you know, a, a period. The natives set on a piece of land for just a period of time and then they move on. The hunting is no more good or the fishing. They don't clean it right out. It's time to move on. All right, uh, Councillor Layners. Well, James, we've gone back a, a ways. When I started, you st well, you'd probably, well, I'll say we both started around the same time, <laughs> digging trenches and doing all those other kinds of things. So I've never, you know, I haven't seen this side of you, and it's, um, it's, oh, it's good. Bad boy. <laughs> well, that's the side I'm used to. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I, you know, I, 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 I think we need to find a, 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 a person that we can kind of start those thoughts about with native, the city. I have native elders that would love them to come and sit down here and have another meeting, and then their elders will have another meeting. All I'm asking for is a piece of land that I can rent for a certain amount of time, and then at that time, I'll be responsible to clean it off. Yeah. So what happened? Like, I, what, what's, like, I, I just don't know how when this all I walked works. around the streets here. Yeah. It doesn't look good. It's our daughters, our sons. Yeah. Uh, who, who, who runs the, the teepee and who, how does that work? How do they, how do, they do the healing? What's, what's your vision for that there, James? From, I've been asking for a Christian base right off the bat. And that's all I'm asking for. Is, and yes, the elders are Christians, the, the ones that I've been speaking to. And as a fact, he's a knelt, I can give you his name, but he's a elder and right there now, he's traveling to Port St. John and he's in the native community here, very heavily. Okay. He cares about his people. Yeah. And I have nothing to gain, John, I'm white. I'm, yeah, no, I know that. That's why part of me is um, you don't have any interest, vested interest in it. So it's it's a, that that's that's what it means the most, right? You want, you got nothing to gain from it. So. Oh, yeah, I, Thanks. I don't care what you, you know. If you say yes, all I'm asking for is a permit for a piece of land. And, but yes, it is it is a pretty serious issue, and the place that I would pick is across from the sundial down your street. right it just might be a, a healing mass and, and I feel for what's happening in your, your area I well, thanks James yeah we're yeah, yeah. all right good council Anders. Councilor Thiessen Thank you very much, Mayor Clayton, and thanks for coming in. And uh, I, I know it's been already stated passion, but thanks for your compassion as well uh, in trying to find solutions for people in our community. Um, so uh, I got a question for you because, I mean, healing centers for me, that's one of the calls uh, to order for, for the Truth and Reconciliation Committee. It's one of 94 uh, that we can do. So there may be something more than a teepee that's potential for Grand Prairie Future. Right across the bridge. Yeah, and so a healing centers I, I kind of. A firm. I hate to say it, I was in the army. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just ask you a question then. Um, my question to you is: You said you had two two pieces of land that you were looking at. One of them sounds to me like you said between Caltire and and uh, Center Two Thousand. So I would I would imagine that would be Musquete Park, uh, right below the hospital there. Uh, where was the a second piece of land that you you thought about? You're going to have a lot of tents set up, right? Across the road from you here, we need a little tent to point people in the direction of some healing. Okay, so just like right outside here. Well, it's half fenced in. You got that building right beside that. Uh, I don't know what you're turning it into. It could house a lot of people, and it's been vacant now for two years, three years. The the Fletcher building. The big one just in front. Right here. Yeah, yeah, the Fletcher building. Yeah, yeah. I 
I worked on that building right there. Yeah. The bricks that went, I'm the one that made the mud. I know my town. There's a building right beside us here. And there's people on the streets. They're freezing to death. You touch them and just leave me die. And it's not for me. It's leave me fucking die. Yeah, I've, I, I've been there. I actually used to work in that building, like right on the corner uh, when I worked for mental health. Right beside the Aberdeen. Yeah, yeah, and the Helmer, Helma Fletcher. Yeah, so, okay, so that's that's all right. Uh, as was mentioned by my colleague, uh, Councillor Bosch, I think a good conversation to have would definitely be with the Friendship Centre, uh, as I know that they have tracts of land alongside there where they have a healing garden that they're building uh, currently, right now. They're going to put in fresh herbs and some of their plant medicines. Awesome. They do have big dreams to one day maybe put a healing centre up on there, but, uh, you know, sometimes all you need is a spark to start a fire. Uh, and I think you could be that, that lightning bolt. And I appreciate you coming in here today because it emphasizes that we can always do a little bit more to help out those who are less fortunate than us and those who have been traumatized by the history of our country. So um, I want to thank you for coming in and showing your passion and compassion. And um, I'm not sure if we're going to get to permits or giving away land today, but uh, it's definitely a start. So thank you very much, thank Mr. You. Fraser. Sorry, I have one question before you leave. <laughs> um, Mr. Fraser, have you ever actually applied for a permit for a temporary event? No. Okay. All right. I see what's happening in my country, and a permit doesn't mean much. Well, a permit gives you permission to yeah. provide... Well, a, if the government or the military or the army wants to shut it down. Yeah, well, it's our land, and we, we, we do issue permits, so I was just curious if you actually... No, like Okay. Okay. Well, I don't. Uh, I, I don't do permit applications, but we will definitely. Uh, when we come to delegation business, we'll find out some more information for you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming today. Now I'm moving on to item 5.3. Mr. Jared Gosson, I see you're online. If you perfect, if you want to introduce yourself for those who are watching, go ahead. Thanks. Five minutes again, and then yeah. I get a time for council to ask some questions. Thank you, Council, uh, or thank you, <laughs> Mayor Clayton, and uh, thanks for the opportunity, Council. Uh, so my name is Jared. I'm the project lead with Wapiti Community Support Association. Our association manages Wapiti House, the Grand Prairie Emergency Shelter, as well as the St. Lawrence Centre, uh, the Day Services Program uh, here in the city, and uh, actually broadcasting from the Street Outreach Centre uh, today, where the St. Lawrence Centre is located. And uh, the, the big news today is that uh, I'm here to ask for a letter of support uh, from Council or from uh, yourself, Mayor, uh, to support our um, request for additional funding, additional annual funding from community and social services. Uh, specifically, we, we sent an ask to Minister Luan uh, right before the provincial budget dropped. Uh, we haven't heard back yet, and we uh, kind of expect to in the next couple of months as we go back and forth with our provincial funders. Um, but the additional ask, so maybe backpedaling a little bit, uh, the Community and Social Services Ministry is the core funder for WAPI House, as well as a number of different uh, programs through the OSSI funding stream here in the city, having to do with homelessness. And uh, what we're requesting is an additional, uh, I have a new computer set up and nothing's cooperating. Uh, an additional 478,000 uh, uh, to our our annual grant for the association, and that would be spent on three main areas. Uh, one is, oh, sorry, I should say this funding is we've been kind of partially receiving it through the opioid or sorry the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, there's been major investment on the part of the ministry to make sure that shelters and day programs ha have had what we need to uh, make sure that people who are most vulnerable in our communities are taken care of through the, uh, the pandemic. And so what we found through that time is all these uh, increased creature comforts and uh, infrastructure upgrades uh, really are just making life in the shelter and in the drop-in center a whole lot easier uh, and would be applicable and needed outside of the pandemic situation as well. And uh, so, although we're through the pandemic, we received a, a quite substantial amount 
uh, of additional funding moving forward and as we look at life outside of COVID-19, um, the need is significantly less from what we've been receiving, uh, but uh, really the pandemic kind of highlighted, especially in, in, in a community like ours, how maybe some areas have not been getting the attention that they've they've needed. And one of those is uh, sustainable funding for our emergency shelter and homelessness programs in the city. So 478 is the ask uh, to the provincial government that our association is making. And it's kind of in three different areas. So one is that through the pandemic, we've been providing breakfast and supper. Uh, breakfast seven days a week, supper five days a week, because we work with some amazing volunteer groups that take care of us on the weekend. Uh, to keep that program running, those two meals a day, uh, we're asking the province for an additional 178,000, uh, or sorry, just just shy of 179. Uh, how we've been doing meals, uh, if you've been to Wapi House, formerly Rotary House, we don't have uh, kitchen facilities really there uh, for large-scale cooking. And so we've been partnering with the Church of Christ, which is just down the road, uh, and we have a cook utilizing that facility, and she's been delivering meals uh, five days a week to to us both at the St. Lawrence Centre and uh, Wapiti House. And where we've seen the benefit there is fed people. It's just one uh, one fewer struggle that folks are going through. And the uh, the benefit has been obviously keeping people healthy, but also reducing a ton of behaviors that come when people are uh, struggling to stay fed. Another area of spending that uh, make up the ask is increasing our uh, starting wage for frontline staff from 1850 to at least uh, 1975, I believe, which is uh, just recently identified as a living wage here in in Grand Prairie. Wapiti House is uh, anecdotally one of the lower funded emergency shelters, and uh, we've been dealing with flat funding, I think, for the better part of about half a decade, I think, for our our frontline positions. There's this really strange dynamic in our community that the, the more you might need intervention, either having to do with mental health, addictions, um, trauma, and treatment of that trauma, the less access you'll actually have to trained individuals. So there's folks who are not allowed to really access mainstream uh, psychiatric care, the psychological care, um, folks who are sometimes not very welcome in the detox centers, that sort of thing. And really their counselor, their family doctor, their therapist um, is someone new to the human services field uh, making 1850. And I'm not disparaging our, our hardworking staff, but they are everything to some of the most complex uh, individuals in our community. And their compensation is far from fair. So we're asking for an increase there. It comes around to about uh, $42,000. Another uh, big component is to, now there will be a lot of talk, um, the last little bit about 24-7 shelter. Wapi House has provided 24 shelter, even though we're not funded for it, for a good number of years for people who are less likely to be under the influence of drugs and alcohol. Uh, it's what we call our COT program. The MAP, the MAP program and uh, Subsequently, those individuals come to the St. Lawrence Centre during the day. That's what we're asking. The uh, that's the area where we're asking for increased spending uh, from the province as well. So that would be the 24/7 shelter component, basically the St. Lawrence Centre. St. Lawrence Centre has been uh, almost fully funded uh, by the province and the city over through the pandemic, and the outcomes out of that, and also the the stress that's taken off of certain individuals having to scrape uh, bucks together uh, just to do our base level programming. We've not had that stress and it just has allowed us to organizationally spend a lot more time with vulnerable people and moving them on to better support. So it's a big chunk of cash, but uh, I can get into the details maybe offline with a few folks who might be interested, but uh, 258,000 is what we're asking the province to come up with annually to make sure that we can shelter all individuals in Grand Prairie 24 seven. And so you're coming from the MAP program, which is currently funded, but then the SLC is not uh, basically the 12 hour day uh, supports that we provide here. 
and then uh, 258,000. Uh, really, the whole idea is that that would take some of the pressure off of uh, the city as well, who's been, uh, you know, guys have been an amazing partner in helping us bridge that gap between community giving and what what our program does need to keep running sustainably. So we're asking for a letter of support. Uh, I think that now, sorry, our letter to the minister uh, has been circulating with administration. I can make it available to council or, or maybe it is in front of you there. Um, and we have received a letter of support from county council so far, a number of organizations in town, obviously. And just kind of goes into more detail around uh, the issues that I've discussed so far. So we need money. Uh, we don't want to ask you for it anymore. Uh, and uh, our provincial partners, um, you know, are, are likely waiting to get back to the table with us in a, in a bigger way. All right. Thanks, Mr. Gossin. I am uh, going to open up to council for questions. And I see Councillor Berg. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Clayton. So, Jared, you know I'm a big advocate for uh, you guys. I'm just curious, um, do you have a homeless count uh, or I, either or um, what your daily traffic is staying at the shelter and then using the St. Lawrence Centre? Yeah, thank you, Councillor Berg. Um, so I think the, the data puts us around about 288 individuals who might use services or are likely to use services last night or tonight um, in the city. Uh, administration definitely has that uh, data because they are pros at getting it from us. Uh, <laughs> and uh, thankfully, administration and, and council, you guys are uh, asking more and more important questions. And so we're, we're happy to bring that data. Uh, yesterday at the St. Lawrence Centre, we saw 60 people. Uh, we have seen daytime numbers drop a little bit just because the weather's been good. Um, when it was frostier there about a week ago, uh, the daytime programs in the winter were seeing about 112 people. So you can definitely, you know, it's another 60 people that didn't come by the centre yesterday that are likely to be out and about. Um, the overnight programs, it's about 150 that uh, Wapiti House um, uh, does shelter every night. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thanks for that, Councillor Burke. Councillor Bosch. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Nice to see you, Jared. Uh, my question to you is, you were talking about the breakfast and dinners. Um, what did you do previously um, that you are, you know, prior to this extra funding from the provincial government? Yeah, great question. Thanks, Councillor. Uh, so really, we weren't doing a whole lot. Um, now, there are, <laughs> that really undersells all the hard work that everybody does. Okay, so usually there was a pot of soup that got put on um, by our frontline staff with donated food. And uh, that was prepared uh, usually in the staff room in a crock pot. Um, not really ideal situations, but uh, make and do with what we can. The Kawash Foundation, uh, which is a volunteer organization of business owners and volunteers in the city, uh, does provide a good amount of meals uh, throughout the week. And generally, there you, um, some is produced uh, specifically with, by a volunteer group. The rest are produced by uh, donating businesses. And that food definitely has, even when we've had this extra funding from the province, has helped fill the gaps and provide a lunch because we're not doing that. Uh, and we're able to give uh, a lot of that food again away for people who might be leaving the shelter. Traditionally, and prior to say, I would say 2017 is when the big changes started to happen. Uh, prior to the pandemic anyway, a lot of folks would make their way over to the community kitchen or the Friendship Center. And prior to that, the uh, community services building just uh, south of 214 place where the Salvation Army provided uh, soup every day. So when the community kitchen moved from the Salvation Army by 214 across the creek into the Friendship Center, we did see some drop off of individuals uh, not being able to make it that far uh, because of mobility issues. One of the bigger issues is the impact of opioids on our community. And that is just, uh, when you come through and uh, as you, many people see downtown, uh, opioids are affecting the mobility of individuals. They're moving slower. Um, also, the dependence that people have on opioids makes it so that they're not they're not getting outside of their pathways of um, drug acquisition 
uh, or fixed acquisition on a on an hourly basis in the seeking out of food. So there's a lot of individuals that just wouldn't make it across the creek to do uh, get to the meals provided at the community kitchen. The other component is I know uh, there's a lot of folks going for food at the Friendship Centre and there's a demographic there that I don't think it's necessarily necessarily wise to um, have a lot of drug users mixing in with. And so we're, we do see a lot of families, uh, individuals maintaining sobriety, uh, seniors and other vulnerable and poor individuals, uh, impoverished individuals accessing those programs. And so we have worked closely with the Friendship Centre and they have added their letter of support to our ask to the province as well saying, <laughs> Grand Prairie is a, a mid-sized city with a big city drug problem and we're far past the point of having one food service being able to service uh, everybody due to the complex behaviors um, coming around because of uh, opiate use. So traditionally people did make it across the, the creek uh, as they were able. Uh, we were kind of supplementing with donated food and uh, you know what could come off the shelf. Anybody who was paying attention to like St. Lawrence Center stuff or in the early days, um, 2015 to you know, 2018, peanut butter and jam, uh, that was kind of our staple. We pumped out thousands of peanut butter and jam sandwiches and uh, we, we still do. Uh, that's probably what we'd go back to if we weren't, weren't uh, getting the food funding. Thank you, Jared. Um, I also wanna say I agree with you with the living wage, um, that is important. Um, and also, I'd like to give you a plug if if you can tell us if you're going to do your fundraiser this year. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so now that uh, the St. Lawrence Centre and Wapiti House are officially one big uh, happy family, uh, we're going to do a joint fundraiser in the fall. So it's uh, booked for early September and uh, we've booked our entertainer and we'll get uh, some save the dates out pretty soon. So I know most of our our fellow nonprofits are pretty excited about the ability to get back out there and, and uh, rally the troops again. Awesome. Thank you, Jared. Thanks for that. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Thank you, uh, Jared, for coming in today and uh, for this request. Always great to see you. I love your candor. Um, so I guess uh, coming out of COVID, everyone had to make adjustments. Uh, there's a lot of social distancing, especially in our shelter spaces and stuff like that. How has how has the clientele that uh, uses that that's utilizing St. Lawrence Center and and Wapiti House how have they adjusted going back to the same old same old? Um, is, is shelter life good right now? Or, or obviously it presents some challenges, but uh, for the most part, how is how are the people interacting there? I think the we all have mixed emotions. Like everyone has obviously has mixed emotions around the relaxation of um, restrictions and are finding new ways of keeping everybody safe and and making good choices and protecting the health of vulnerable people or or even just our friends and family. But one thing that was kind of exciting with the relaxation of certain uh, certain restrictions on us we're reducing barriers between workers or support workers and uh, program participants or visitors who come to our come to the center or to the shelter. And this is something that we struggled with greatly through COVID um, besides the, the virus itself was the increase in conflict. Uh, and that, it, it was heartbreaking. So, you know, if, if you're familiar with the St. Lawrence Center, our our vision was that everyone can have a life-changing encounter with love. And so for the last, you know, two years, finding out how to facilitate those life-changing encounters at a, uh, you know, one meter distance, demanding that people put masks on, uh, rightfully so, but at the same time, you know, people were just trying to live and get through the day. And so with the change in weather, um, that's, I think, mostly why people are, are you know, breathing freely, maybe for the first time in, in about a year and a half or so. Um, I think shelter life right now is good. There's never been a more privileged statement ever because shelter life for me is fine because I go home to my house every night. Uh, but now that uh, there's, you know, not the, the threat of cold weather, people can kind of get, you know, go for that walk, get some space from each other. I was really, really impressed uh, through through the winter.
nature and trying to you know manage those restrictions at the resiliency of staff but also the graciousness of our residents and uh, and they could see uh, how tough it was on everybody and i think we all did our best uh, did i dance around your question enough chris no no you actually no you supplied it with the candor i expected from you and uh, i appreciate that perspective thank you very much jared all right so thank you for that um Mr. Gosson, we, um, as you know, deal with delegation business at the end of the meeting. Uh, your request for the letter um, has been asked, and Council will deal with that when we get to delegation business. So I appreciate you coming forward, providing us an update, and providing additional information in regards to you know what your organization is currently working on and what your needs are. So thank you for that, and uh, we will now move along in our agenda. You're more than welcome to stay on the call if you would, um, wouldn't mind just turning off your camera. And uh, or if you want to, uh, if you need to leave for other commitments, uh, we will follow up with you following this meeting. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. All right, moving on in our agenda, item into reports, uh, item uh, six point one, a revised bylaw C thirteen seventy one, which is the Northern Lights Area Structure Plan. I'll turn to administration. Um, for a brief introduction, um, Mr. DeRoche. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Um, the proposed bylaw is a revised version of the Northern Lights Area Structure Plan. The ASP was adopted in 2018 and establishes a long-term vision for the development of an area of land in the northeast of the city for predominantly industrial development. And this is a part of land that was annexed from the county in 2016. Um, the proposed revision is simply to correct a typographical error in a map. So map 11, a northeast quarter section 32 was identified as 33 through this error. And so this amendment corrects that on the map. And so it is being presented today with reports instead of a public hearing because it is being brought forward under section 63 of the Municipal Government Act, which allows revisions to bylaws without a new public hearing or advertising under certain conditions. And that includes um, amendments or excuse me, revisions that don't materially affect the nature of the, the bylaw, such as typographical errors. And so we've included with your report a letter signed by the interim city manager um, stating that the proposed revision meets the terms of the section of the Municipal Government Act. And we ask, uh, recommend that you have and give the revised bylaw all three readings. Thank you. Great, thanks for that, Mr. DeRoche. So just to be clear, there was a typo in the bylaw when originally passed. Uh, this is now being um, corrected. Uh, the acting um, city manager at the time signed off that this is uh, um, works in within the limitations of the Municipal Government Act. So truly, we're just here to correct this and, and look to have three readings here today for this uh, typographical error. I see Councillor Lanner's hand. I'll assume that means he wants in the queue. Go ahead. I'd like to make a motion that Council give first reading to revise bylaw C-1371 being the Northern Lights Area Structure Plan. Perfect. That motion is in order. No discussion or debate on first reading. I'll call the question. Please vote. Councillor O'Toole votes in favour. And that carries unanimously. Councillor Lanners. Yeah, I would like to have uh, Council give second reading to um, revise bylaw C-1371. Perfect. That motion is in order. Opportunity for discussion or debate on the merits of having second reading here today, or sorry, of, of the by revised bylaw. If you have any questions, now would be the time. If not, seeing none, call the question on second reading. Councillor O'Toole votes in favour. And that carries unanimously. Councillor Lanners. Yes, I'd like to have uh, make a motion that Council have third reading of revised bylaw C-1371 at this meeting. All right, so this is a motion to have third reading here tonight. It must pass unanimously in order for us to have third reading. I will call the question. Please vote. That carries unanimously. Councillor Lehners. Yeah, 
And um, finally, I'd like to make a motion that council give third reading to revise bylaw C-1371 being the Northern Lights Area Structure Plan. Perfect. So this is third reading here tonight for the revised bylaw. I will call the question. And that carries unanimously. Thank you for Mr. DeRoche. Moving on to reports item 6.2. This is the, um, as laid out in our um, ICF agreement with the province and with our neighbours, the county, there is a expectation for us to have an intermunicipal collaboration committee. Um, and today, this is uh, a motion to have the appointments of this, so it is bound. Um, the recommendation for the two councillors are also the two councillors that were on the um, ICF, identified to be on the ICF committee. So I will look um, for um, support of this. Uh, Councillor O'Connor. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Clayton. I would like to move that council appoint councillors Bressy and Laners to the Intermunicipality Municipalities Collaboration Committee. Great, so this is a motion to appoint Council Bressy and Landers to the Intermunicipal Collaboration Committee. Any comments or questions on that motion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. And that carries unanimously. Moving on to committee business of today, uh, the Community Services Committee meeting that is a meeting from March 29th, and I will look to Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Clayton. I'd move that Council adopt the minutes of the Community Services Committee meeting held March 29th, 2022, as presented. Perfect. Thank you for that motion. Seeing no concerns of errors or omissions, I'll call the question. The minutes of that meeting, please vote. And that carries unanimously. I see you have a couple items of business. Councillor Thiessen. Well, yeah, we were the most productive committee that day. We had took so much time to do it too. But in that, uh, the first item of business is uh, just a library board bylaw amendment. And I would move that council give three readings to bylaw C. Oh, sorry, I move that council give first reading to bylaw C-1364A being an amendment to the City of Grand Prairie Library Board bylaw. Just speaking to this, uh, we had uh, a delegation from the Grand Prairie Public Library come in and ask us if we would uh, change our, our terms uh, under the library board to allow for a county councillor to be in place of a councillor from the Municipal District of Greenview. So uh, that's what this vote would do. So I encourage everyone to vote all three readings and to have third reading today. Thanks. All right. So that motion is in order. No discussion or debate on first reading. I'll call the question. And that carries unanimously. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Clayton. I would move that council give second reading to bylaw C-1364A being an amendment to the City of Grand Prairie Library Board bylaw. Perfect. So this is for second reading. Any discussion or debate? Seeing no one in the queue, I'll call the question. Please vote. And that carries unanimously. Councillor Thiessen. Obviously no discussion and debate on this one, so I would move to have third reading at this meeting. All right, there actually is an opportunity for discussion on debate on the merits of having third reading, but I do not see anyone in the queue, so I will call the question. And that carries unanimously. Councillor Thiessen. Where is Councillor Bressy when you need a good debate? I would move that Council give third reading to bylaw C-1364A being an amendment to the City of Grand Prairie Library Board bylaw. Perfect. This motion is in order. I see no comments or questions. No one in the queue. So I'll call the question. Please vote. And that carries unanimously. Moving on to your second item of business, Councillor Thiessen. Yeah, thank you very much, Mayor Clayton. Uh, this is under the multiplex naming rights, and to this degree, I would move that Council approve the renewal of the naming rights for the multiplex located at 10 Knowledge Way to Bragg Communications Incorporated, 
operating as Eastlink and maintain the name of the Eastlink Center. Uh, just a quick note, I'd just like to say thank you to not only Bragg Communications, but to our hard work and staff for getting the City of Grand Prairie the best possible deal going forward. I know my, my old colleague, Helen Rice, used to complain about naming rights, but uh, I don't think she'd be complaining about this one. So thank you very much to Bragg and thank you to our city admin for working out this great deal. Perfect. Perfect. That motion is in order. Thanks for that, Councillor Thiessen. I will call the question. Council to approve the renewal. Please vote. And that carries unanimously. Any highlights from your meeting, Councillor Thiessen? For sure, we had a couple delegations. First off, we had one from Peace Library Systems come in and just talk to us about how our city funding is being spent at the Peace Library System and around the region. We also had a delegation from Fastball and Slow Pitch and a robust discussion that yeah, took up most of the meeting there on uh, the availability of diamonds around, around the city of Grand Prairie. And um, although no real decisions were made at that meeting, I think going forward and looking at our budget year, I think our administration was taking lots of notes as per that discussion. And we'll see if there's maybe some concessions that we might be able to find for the groups without having to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on building a bunch of diamonds all over the city that we may or may not need. So uh, some more investigation there, definitely more conversation for the future. I'd also like to just put out a couple shout outs. Rogers Hometown Hockey was here. The crowd was great. About 6,000 attendees came throughout the weekend. I got to watch it from the comfort of my own home and see local legend Doug Eady live on TV. So that was uh, amazing. Also, uh, if you're really into hockey, this weekend, uh, Grand Prairie Minor Hockey is uh, looking forward to hosting the U15 AAA Provincials from April 7th to 10th. So if you want to go and celebrate some GP pride and some good hockey, uh, that's the place to go, especially for the youth. I know they love the cheers. And finally, the hot, wat, hot water <laughs> heat exchanger was delivered, signed, sealed, delivered, and installed. And I went and checked it out for myself. The showers are running hot at the East Link Center right now, and uh, all is nothing but good news so far. So thank you to administration for making sure that that was well communicated to the public, as well as uh, put together as quickly as possible so that we didn't have any undue hardships from cold showers. Thank you so much. Thanks, uh, Councilor Tees. And I'm just going to mention one item from your uh, meeting that I think is of importance. A reminder to the public that we're having an official grand opening of the Activity and Reception Center on April 10th from 1 to 5 p.m. So if you haven't had a chance to come out and check out the new facility uh, and it's in its entirety, it's a great day to do so. Uh, April 10th from 1 to 5, the community is encouraged to drop by and see our new facility. So thank you for that. Moving on to item 7.2, the Infrastructure and Economic Development Committee uh, also held on March 29th. And I will turn this over to Councillor O'Connor. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Um, I'd like to have the minutes from the, and I lost my place here, March 29th meeting uh, for economic development. Please accept that. All right, so a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Call the question, unless anyone had any errors or omissions. Seeing none, please vote. And that is carried unanimously. Uh, a couple items of business. Councillor O'Connor. Yes. <clears throat> um, we are bringing forward uh, policy uh, 618 for revisions. There are just some items that need to be adjusted, and uh, so that's been amended. So I'd like to put that motion forward. I don't have the tab come up here. So, Councillor O'Connor, it's just a motion to adopt policy 618 as revised. Yes, uh, please accept motion uh, 618 as revised. Thank so thank you for that. That is in order. This policy really just had a refresh and some updates. And so this is a motion to accept those revisions. Uh, in regards to the lands, roads, and building, um, assigning an address is the title of the policy. I see no one in the queue. I just want to identify that Councillor Bosch has left the chambers. Uh, so I'll call the question on the revision of the policy. And that is carried unanimously. Councillor O'Connor, you had one other uh, item of business. Yes, uh, we'd like to uh, put forward council to adopt policy 620 as revised. 
Perfect. This too is just a housekeeping duty. We now call our the department planning and development rather than engineering services. So just a couple uh, refresh items on this policy. Uh, see no comments or questions. So that motion in his order is in order. I will call the question on the motion to accept the revision of policy 620 as presented. Uh, call the question and please vote. And that carries unanimously. Any highlights from your meeting, Councillor O'Connor? Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Clayton. Uh, economic development, we're able to have a booth at the ICSC uh, convention, and we presented there and met all stakeholders at that meeting. Uh, phase one of sidewalk uh, tender has been uh, put out for 100th Street through to uh, 116th and 128th. Uh, intersection improvements, uh, 72nd Avenue, 80th Avenue, and 108th Street, uh, Auxiliary Lane, and all those are uh, being put out. And then uh, the following projects are closed, 99th Avenue bridge repairs, and Phase 3 street sweeping is underway. Thank you. That's all I have to report. All right, I just want to, don't want to get anybody's hopes up. Phase three is not underway, but street sweeping is underway. <laughs> yes, I, allu I elided those two. Okay. Sorry, my error. Just so that nobody is phoning Councillor O'Connor to clarify that their street hasn't been swept yet, we have started street sweeping, so, yes. which is a great sign that spring is on its way. So thank you for that. Uh, moving on to item 7.3, the Protective and Social Services Committee meeting, also held on March 29th. And I will look to Councillor O'Connor for, or O'Toole rather, for introduction. Yeah. I'm going to get a different colored shirt, I think. Anyhow. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mayor Clayton. I move the Council adopt the minutes of the Protective and Social Services Committee meeting held March 29th, 2022, as presented. Perfect. So that motion is in order to adopt the meeting minutes. I see no one in the queue for any errors. I'll call the question. And that carries unanimously. Couple of, or one item of business, Councillor O'Toole. Yes. Thank you. I have a, uh, a motion to make here, and I move the council direct the mayor to write a letter to relevant officials requesting compensation for the significant hard and soft costs incurred to implement the administrative penalty system. And to speak with that, that was something that the province really wanted to get going. And at uh, last month, they canceled the project. And uh, so we invested a significant amount of money to be prepared for this. So when it rolled off, we would be ready to go. And of course, now we're stuck with this equipment and some of it I don't think we'll be able to use. So with that, that's the motion. All right, thank you for that. So that's a motion to have me to write a letter uh, requesting um, compensation for costs that were incurred uh, due to uh, changing of a process that in turn changed <laughs> again. So I'll call the question on this motion. And that carries unanimously. Any highlights from your meeting, Councillor O'Toole? Yes, we had a director services area report, and I can just go over a couple of the items that were included. Uh, everything else is in the minutes for tonight's meeting, uh, but uh, community social development, the youth, Ad youth advisory council recently hosted a financial literacy 101 session. Uh, with that, 25 people joined online. Uh, four Youth Advisory Council members participated in the Culture and Recreation Engagement Session. And to recognize March 21st, the International Day of Elimination of Racial Discrimination, Administration partnered with Today FM to, co to showcase equity, diversity, and inclusion awareness and education. And the federal government announced a $1.82 in funding over the next two years for reaching home. 
I'm not sure what that is. Uh, can you clarify that for me? Director Manuel. Uh, through the mayor, certainly can. That is, reaching home funds are federal uh, dollars to support uh, communities that uh, face issues pertaining to uh, homelessness and um, housing. Thank you. It was a long time ago and there was a long meeting that day. Uh, enforcement services, just a couple highlights here. Foot patrols uh, downtown have resumed and will soon expand into neighborhoods and dock parks. Uh, the spring vehicle for hire inspection cycle is scheduled to begin today and the Alberta government has uh, shelved the administration penalty information system, which I just explained earlier. So with that, I will, uh, that's my report. Great, thanks for that update, Councillor O'Toole. Moving on to item 7.4, the Corporate Services Committee meeting also held March 29th, and I'll look to Deputy uh, Chair uh, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, thank you very much once again. Uh, I move that Council adopt the minutes of the Corporate Services Committee meeting held March 29th, 2022, as presented. All right, that motion is in order. Seeing no one in the queue, I will call the question. Please vote. And that carries unanimously. Councillor O'Toole, a couple items of business there. Yes. I uh, just got some uh, some policies that we, re our administration review. And uh, with that being said, there's just some home, uh, uh, changing some wording to make sure that it's still accurate in today's uh, standards and uh, so I'm going to go off with all of them I think one at a time or did we want to do yeah. I can do them all and uh, basically it's just uh, making sure that things are uh, accurate for today's standards so the first one I move council approve policy 501 it's the personal information bank B or PIB as presented uh, and it's uh, basically some FOIP stuff that we need to make sure that uh, everything is in place and of course with that uh, there are some changes throughout the years and uh, so that that's that one. Uh, I'll move the second one which is council to approve five policy 502 safeguarding privacy as presented. Once again it's just uh, getting things back into place and uh, 503 Council approved policy 503, authentication of identification as presented. And the next one is 504, uh, council approved policy 504, oral and or electronic consent as presented. Great, so thank you for that, Council O'Toole. That's a motion to approve policy 501, 502, 503, and 504. Seeing no one in the queue with comments or questions, I will call the question. Please vote. And that is carried unanimously. Any highlights from your meeting, Councillor O'Toole? Uh, I can just, just give me a second here. Mm -hmm. It was uh, this time of the day, it was hour four, I think it was. So, uh, Director Services Area rep Update uh, was uh, Multi-Department Finance Procurement, Human Resources, IT, and Strategic initi Initiatives have been working collaboratively on the ERP implementation. Focus on information gathering, decisions, data conversation, migration for four modules uh, has been uh, looked at already. Assessment, taxation, and tax sale that was scheduled for March 18th was cancelled. Arrangements were made for all properties that were eligible, and administration is preparing for tax time and moving back to a June 30th deadline. Uh, usually we get a, about a, a, a number of tax sales, and it's very, very few that we actually go through with a sale that the city takes. Uh, finance draft to 2021 audited financial statements are expected by the end of next week and will be presented to committee by the CFO and auditors will occur 
at the April 12th committee meeting. And uh, procurement, administration is facilitating competitive bids as required and there are currently six bids open at this time. Uh, and that I will call my report. Great, thank you for that, Councillor O'Toole. Moving on to correspondence, N item number eight. In your package, you will see a letter from the Municipal District of Greenview uh, looking for a letter of support in regards to the proposal for the carbon caption, carbon capture sequestration uh, in the Greenview Industrial Gateway area. The letter is in your package. Um, I just really wanted to, uh, Council to be aware of this. Um, in my opinion, uh, we absolutely need to full-heartedly support uh, this um, opportunity that's in our region. Um, investment in our, into our region is always good for the city. So I'm, I'm very supportive of um, what we can do to support our, our regional partners in the MD of Greenview. But I'm happy to take questions or comments or concerns with going through of um, putting together a letter of support. If not, uh, Councillor Lerners. Yeah, I, I, I like you. Uh, oh, don't. <laughs> well, I do. Hey, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> I consistently believe <laughs> that this is a good idea for what's good for, for the region is good for us. And so I would like to um, make that motion that we support the MD of Greenview on their um, uh, request um, on energy sequestration. Um, I'm blessing my little flag thing here and nothing's actually happening on my motion. So, um, but anyway, I think that was, that, would you be looking for more than that for the motion? Not at all. Okay. But just more, just one for, have an opportunity for discussion in case council had anything specific or any concerns before I sent a letter of support for this. So seeing no one, that motion is in order. I will call the question, please vote. Yep, not a problem. And that carries unanimously. And thank you, uh, Councillor Landers. I like you as well. <laughs> uh, moving on to delegation business, item 9.1. Ms. Rosendale, as you are aware, she was here in regards to consultation um, in, a, in a, a process that we currently have in our land use bylaw. Um, as we're all aware, there are um, opportunities in our land use bylaw for um, discretionary approval, which is given to um, this council. Um, this is not the issue here today. This, her concerns are more on the process of consultation um, rather than the item that was actually was applied for. So I'll open it up to uh, questions to administration and um, potentially a business arising. Councillor Bosch. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Um, I do understand what Mrs. Ro Rosendale uh, has gone through. I've, I've experienced this more than once. I am wondering through administration is it possible to send out, I know that the date starts when it goes into the mailroom, the two weeks. Is it possible to send it out a week prior and then still maintain your dates from that two week period? I will direct that to Council Director Glavin. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Clayton. So the requirement to circulate uh, two, for two weeks isn't actually a requirement. It's a standard that we try to achieve internally, but it's not dictated to us in the land use bylaw or the MGA. Uh, so we are striving to meet that. So what we have discussed internally is sending it out five days before uh, that two week period would start. But just to be clear, there is no requirement uh, to send it out for two weeks in advance. Perfect, you're doing exactly what everybody would want you to do. So thank you for thinking ahead. Councillor O'Connor. Yes, thank you, Mayor Clayton. I'm just curious, there seems to be, uh, can we talk about the bylaw itself or is that for a later time? Uh, I mean, if you have relevant questions on the bylaw, go for it. Yeah, I'm just wondering what's allowable. I, I didn't know that, uh, and I'll direct this through the, the mayor. Um, is a dental hygienist uh, a home-based business? So I'll text it to Director Glavin. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. So 
Section 49 of the Land Use Bylaw deals with home-based businesses. There's a number of regulations in there. Uh, in that section, it doesn't permit uses. It restricts some uses from happening. So, for example, you're not allowed to have uh, automotive, industrial, recreational vehicle sales, storage, rental, storage of hazardous, noxious, or dangerous goods. Uh, it doesn't specifically say what is permitted. So, so within that, that's part of the discretion uh, that a development officer would have. So in this case, we currently have some home businesses that are uh, for massage therapy, for example, which as far as a neighborhood impact would be similar to a dental hygienist. Uh, and one thing to be clear also in section 49, there are already a number of restrictions that you wouldn't face in a commercial area, such as something like there being a maximum of six home business related vehicle round trips per day. So that limits how many clients that you can have and how many clients you're allowed to have it at any one time. You're not allowed to have more than one client at any one time. So in the case of, of a home business, it is not converting a single family home into a business. It is allowing business activity to be in the residence. So there would still be people living there. It wouldn't be converted to a dental office in this case. And I have a second, but I'll wait for others in the queue, but I'd like to have a motion that I'll put forward later. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Councillor Berg. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Clayton. So Ms. Rosendale indicated that there was no sign, and I think what she's really getting at in some ways is that there was a breakdown in communication. And I, I was kind of even a little bit confused with the process. So was the applicant currently a resident or was the house up for sale and it was part of a future sale or condition of sale? Patrick Lavin? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Clayton. So in this case, the house was for sale. Someone was looking to purchase it. The owner of the house signed off on the development permit. So they were aware of what the future... Uh, owner was looking to do with the property and had that consent and that's part of the normal process you can't apply for a development permit without the consent of the owner okay but again there was no sign in this case because again i've seen them in my neighborhood and regardless whether i get something in the mail or not if i'm walking by or driving by i can see that sign so was the future uh tenant i guess not required to post the sign outside the residence patrick Lavin. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I'd have to confirm specifically on the sign, but in this case, the requirement would be to circulate to adjacent landowners. So in this case, I think there are four or five adjacent landowners that would have received it. So that would be, um, just to illustrate it, only the properties that either touch it or are directly adjacent across, in this case, the lane, would get circulated. So if you were two houses away from this development, you would not get a circulation. Okay, yeah, but I'm just more asking about the sign. I think that would have saved us some headaches if there was an actual sign out front of the, the, the property. Is that not required? Director Glavin. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I'll have to confirm whether or not that was required in this case, but I don't believe so. Okay, that, that might be something we want to look at then. Thank you. Councillor O'Toole. Yeah, my question is basically, uh, I think part of it was answered, it just the immediate properties. And I was wondering if there was some way that we could hand deliver, you know, something less than eight letters that's basically two on each side of the facility and two behind. This particular property, it's nothing but the view of the college. So there was just the side businesses and the ones in the immediately behind. I'm not saying this is for everything because I'm not sure if we have to do in an area of 150 meters or whatever it happens to be. But... Uh, in situations where it's like say under 10, uh, I was wondering if it's a possibility, maybe a little bit more efficient to just hand deliver them in the future. I'm not making a motion here or nothing, just something that I would like administration to give me their feedback on. Director Glavin. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Uh, I think that's something council could consider amending the land use bylaw to to do uh, administration. I, I don't believe we would use our discretion in that case. You'd have to create a, a threshold of, of how many. And I think currently it's probably, yeah, you know, our substituting our discretion for the land use bylaw, I think in this case it's likely to be consistent with the land use bylaw. If I can just uh, chime in here, um the intent of, of council in the past has always been for consistency in regards to items 
especially with the land use bylaw, to leave little for interpretation so that it be clearly identified in the process. So, um, you know, for one to be a hand delivered and one not to be hand delivered and um, one to be five days and one not to be five days, um, you know, inconsistency is um, always a concern. The other part, um, I appreciate now that the postal services have changed in our city that there is concern of that. However, the two week time frame was put in place to make the process as quick as possible. So keep in mind when we're adding another five days, now we're getting closer to three weeks for appro approval on a business permit. So the longer that we add time on, change land use bylaw things, the less consistent we are, the less nimble we are. Um, so just something for consideration. Councillor Thiessen. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor Clayton. I'm actually, uh, I like the way, I like this discussion. I like what you just said, because my, my concern is really around being consistent and around the, the definition of uh, home business. I've just been looking at our, our land use bylaw and the definition on there. They, and it leaves a lot to the imagination, which doesn't leave a very clear process. As somebody who used to work uh, with uh, hyperbaric oxygen chambers, I understand that there's different, there's different sets. Sometimes you have to put an actual flammable, combustible set of big uh, oxygen tanks outside your house as well as that you know are cryogenically frozen, and if you puncture them, they could go kablooey. Uh, now, if we're allowing that next door to someone's house, I think that would raise some concerns. I'm not saying that administration would wholeheartedly adopt it, but I'm really curious as to see what Councillor O'Connor is going to craft up for a motion, because it sounds like we're kind of thinking the same thing uh, in regards to home businesses. So that's where I'd like to see this conversation go, and I'll turn it over to him. Sorry, um, I'm just going to, I see you next in the queue, Councillor O'Connor. Um, however, I'm gonna to go to Councillor Bosch next so that you can go to your business. Councillor Bosch. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. For me, I just want it to be fair for not only the people who want to open a business, but also give the opportunity to, to the people nearby to if they do have a reason or concern or something that is, um, particularly unsettling for them, that they have an opportunity to speak. So I'm not sure we can change the Postal Service, but um, I think adding that five days, doing our side of the paperwork, it may be a bit inconvenient for um, others, but you know, overall, I think communication is key. And if we can resolve some of these issues prior to them becoming larger issues, then, um, Maybe we just all take that five days on the chin and, and go that way. All right. Thanks for that. I'm going to go to Councillor O'Connor next. Thank you, Mary Clayton. Um, I have a, a, a concern about, and we've heard this happen before in other development issues, and I, I really think people need to be notified in a proper time. So, and I will adjust my motion depending on Mr. Thiessen if, how you're going to do, but I'd like to direct administration to look at alternative uh, methods of ensuring de delivery of development notices to uh, the affected parties. And in this case, I think uh, it, it's if you need that to be in, uh, uh, what do you call it, in a bylaw, or is that what you want, Director Glavin? So um, go ahead, Director Glavin, and then I can chime in. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Uh, if I understand it correctly, you're looking for a mechanism that would verify that it's been received, like a registered mail or something to that effect? Yeah, we're not talking a huge cost right here, and that's what I'd like to ensure is that people get proper notification. And if we can't guarantee that the post office is going to be able to deliver in a timely manner, you could add five days, but if it does, if it takes 20, we're in the same place. So if I could just make a suggestion that um, if you're directing management to change something within the land use bylaw, that uh, your motion might be better served as uh, directing administration to bring back opportunities um, in the land use bylaw in regards to delivery, delivery methods. Um, I, I, you know, a registered mail letter for every bylaw um, consultation could be significant, but uh, let's leave it up to administration to bring back. Um, That's kind of, I left yeah. it open that way. Perfect. Have them okay. come back. So, I, 
I see no one else in the queue, so I will call the question on Councillor O'Connor. I'll wait, sorry, for you to have a moment to revise that motion. Do you want me to read it out again? Nope, it's in your package. Thank you. Are you fine with that, Councillor O'Connor? So it's direct administration to explore opportunities to amend the land use bylaw to ensure delivery of development notices to the affected parties and report back to the appropriate standing committee. Yes, I am. So I just wonder, um, yeah, I mean, we can talk about that. Uh, Director Glavin, are you fine with that? I mean, for me, it's uh, improving delivery rather than ensuring delivery. But if, Director Glavin, if you're comfortable with that motion as laid out, um, then. Thank you, Rick Lane. Yeah, that's sufficient that we can uh, bring back some options. We understand the intent. Perfect. Okay, Councillor Berg, comments or questions on the motion? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Clayton. So my only comment is is that I again I would like to find out if we are consistent with the signage requirements because it seems again out of consistency that we've continually had signages but Mrs. Rosendale was saying that she didn't see one so I just like that as part of the research not as an amendment to the to so maybe just through an email director Glavin if you could update council in regards to that I, I don't think that every home-based business would require a significant sign on the front lawn to let you know that they've applied for a permit. But uh, Director Glavin. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. And I've just had it confirmed that we only post signage for rezonings, mm -hmm. not in the case of a development permit. Okay, thank you. All right, Councillor Bosch, comments or questions on the motion on the floor? Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Uh, I do like this motion. However, um, I would like to amend um, and take insure out and what was the word that we put in? Improve. Improve, because I think you're setting yourself up for anomalies, and um, I would hate for, I don't think anything is 100% guaranteed. Um, so I would like a friendly um, amendment. Well, Connor, are you comfortable with I'm, 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 I'm with that. Okay. okay. So that would amend the motion to read, to amend the land use bylaw to improve delivery of development no notices in the affected parties and report back to the appropriate standing committee. Thank you. All right, so seeing no one else in the queue, I will call the question on that motion. Please vote. And that is carried six to one. Okay, next under delegation business, we had Mr. Fraser who was there earlier um, looking for an opportunity for uh, a healing tent uh, as well as working with the administration and council to see what the opportunities are in our community. I will open that up to council for questions to administration or any business arising. Councillor Lehners. Yeah, I'll, I'll start uh, the, the the game, <laughs> not the game, but the, the process. And I will make a motion that CLT um, involves stakeholders uh, regarding the merits of a healing center and bring it back to the appropriate standing committee. And I'll, I'll leave it at that, but you know, we have an indigenous uh, uh, coordinator now, and I think- Not yet. Not yet, but soon. And yep. so there's a role there perhaps. And some, and some um, and so I think we can play a role in this. We have land, we have, we have need, and so, but I don't think it's for us to decide today what we're going to do, but to, to, to go back and reflect and try and find opportunities or if there's an actual need or if it's not being dealt with somewhere else. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a valuable um, path to, to journey on. So I'll make that motion. Perfect. Thank you for that motion. I see Councillor Berg in the queue. Uh, ju just to thank you, Mayor Clayton, just to speak to that, I honestly think that we really need to involve uh, the Friendship Centre in anything like this. Uh, I know that they've already, I guess, as Councillor Thiessen pointed out, they've got that healing garden. And if there's going to be any healing centre, I really think that they need to be involved. They've got the trained people. It needs to be structured. It needs to be organized. Um, and I think that's the right group here in town. So what we would need to do is explore to see if they're on board with something like that. Perfect. And I think um, if you're good with that, Councillor Berg, I think appropriate stakeholders would encompass that. Yes. Great. Thank you for that. Councillor Thiessen. Uh, 
Thank you very much, Mayor Clayton. Yeah, no, thank you, Councillor Laners, for making this. I'd just also like to point out that uh, amongst appropriate stakeholders that Horse Lake First Nation holds some land in the city here, uh, sort of on the southeast area of town. Uh, also, um, this should be uh, very much, I think, Indigenous-led. And that's, I'm just, I'm saying that uh, because too many times us, us colonizers or us, you know, people who have like were born in here have decided that we knew what was best for our First Nations people. Uh, my understanding with healing centers and actually setting foot in them is that these are true places where people go. It's it's dry. It's a sober. It's a sober lifestyle. It's it's cultural reintegration. There's it's even a living headquarters. So it's a lot bigger than just a teepee on on the land. And it's uh, something that uh, you know our FNMI community has asked for in the calls uh, for recon for truth and reconciliation. So I really appreciate this motion. I support it wholeheartedly. I can't wait to to send out those letters and to see our, our stakeholders come forward and what ideas they bring to the table great thank you for that councillor o'toole yeah i uh, i like the motion and one of the reasons i like it is it doesn't say which land so if we can find a place where there is some indigenous land maybe uh something that was a, a camping area or something we go back a hundred years that's available then that's something that we can look at for sure so you sort of stole my thunder there sir <laughs> all right Thank you for that, Councilor O'Toole. Seeing no further comments or questions, I will call the question on the motion to a direct administration to reach out to the appropriate stakeholders regarding the potential of a healing center within the city limits and bring the discussion back to the appropriate standing committee. Sorry, not now. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'll call the question. And that is carried unanimously. Um, Mr. Fraser, I want to thank you for coming tonight. Uh, if you do have follow-up uh, conversations or questions, it might be best when you when we come back to the appropriate standing committee with the information that administration gathers. Uh, maybe we can, if you, I'm assuming your contact information was on the form that you let us know. So I will... Perfect. So I will ask administration when this comes back to the appropriate standing committee that they reach out to Mr. Fraser and let him know that we will be having a discussion. You would like to paint a picture? Yes. Okay. Sure. Can we, do you mind if we do that? Just, we're almost done this portion of our meeting and don't leave, but I will, as soon as we're done this portion, I'll come have a chat with you. Per yeah, I'll come, I'll come chat. Okay, perfect. Just give me two items left, okay? And I'll be right with you. Item number 9.3, Mr. Gossam was here tonight as well, looking for, sorry, and I apologize, Councillor Thies, and I see you in the queue. Go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor Clayton. Actually, this was uh, exactly for, for this. Oh, okay, uh, To speak perfect. to what uh, Mr. Gossam came and asked us for, and I would move that uh, Council Direct the Mayor to write a letter of support for additional funding uh to address uh the the cost of food additional wages and the cost of doing business in grand prairie on behalf of wapiti house and the st lawrence center all right uh, i'm just going to double check with director Manuel if that uh, in your opinion encompasses the conversation you had with mr gossen earlier in regards to looking for the provincial support is really what the the request for the letter is and if you think that's suffice correct and i do have a, a draft um to support the mayors. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. I'll call the question on that motion. I'll just give Ms. Karbachewski a second to catch up. I apologize for that. Um, <laughs> through the mayor, could yes. I please ask Councillor Thiessen to repeat his motion? Perfect. Yeah, Councilor for sure. Um, so I would move that Council direct the mayor to write a letter of support for additional funding to address the cost of food, wages, and doing business on behalf of the St. Lawrence Center and Wapiti House. And if I can just, um, I guess it's continued and additional because they're already receiving that funding. So, you know, it's continued funding to con keep the continued programming, but then the additional to to uh, allow that the, um, the employees in that sector are paid the appropriate living wage. 100%, I'm okay, I'm amenable to that. You've got to write the letter and put your Jane okay, Hancock perfect. on it, so. Thank you for that. All right. Councillor O'Connor. 
Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I just want to make sure that we capture everything. I hope that's in the letter that uh, uh, Mr. Gosson okay. has got there and then includes the 24 7 piece. Okay. I will make sure it's there. Thank you. All right, seeing no further comments or questions, I'll call the question on the motion. Please vote. And that is carried unanimously. Moving along now to item number 10, there were no notices of motion. So now we will take council recess. We will be back at six o'clock and I uh, encourage you to join us then. Thanks so much.
three, two, one. Good evening and welcome back to the evening session of our council meeting of April 4th. Appreciate uh, your patience as we get going here. First on the agenda for the evening session is scheduled delegations. And as I mentioned earlier, as a 3 p.m. session, you're more than welcome to join us without notice. Um, it's great if you give us a heads up, but if you don't, that's totally fine. For the evening session though, however, we ask that you fill out an online form to let us know you're coming because we don't always have an evening session. So we would hate you to show up and us not be here. So I uh, appreciate if you can, uh, if you plan to be in the evening session that you fill out the paperwork as uh, one delegation has done so today. So under scheduled delegations, first, the only scheduled delegation we have is Ms. Karen uh, Gillickson. Ask that you come forward, introduce yourself for those who are watching, and then about five minutes to, um, and if you could both introduce yourself for those who are watching at home, about five minutes to present uh, your topic today. Then council will have an opportunity for questions. Then uh, at the end of our meeting, and we have a couple of public hearings, so and it, but it shouldn't take too long. We deal with delegation business. So at that time, after your presentation today, you're more than welcome to leave, stay. If you do leave, administration will follow up with you. Um, but after your presentation, council, I'm sure we'll have a few questions. So welcome, introduce yourselves, and then I'll turn it over to you. Oh, excuse me, Mayor Clayton? Absolutely. I am going to excuse myself for a perceived or potential conflict. Thanks for that, Councillor Berg. And you literally told me two minutes ago and I forgot already. So, uh, so Councillor Berg will be removing himself from the chambers for a potential perceived conflict of interest. So now I will turn it over to the delegation. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mayor Clayton and Councillors, for, for having us here this evening. Oh, thank Just you. I get you perfect. Thank you. My name is Karen Gilkison, and I am here presenting on behalf of Tiny Hands of Hope. I am the co-founder of Tiny Hands of Hope. Nearly nine years ago uh, is when it was founded after the loss of our daughter, Stella, who passed away at 17 days old. I've also experienced four miscarriages myself, so I understand loss at a very deep personal level. Uh, many of you know Eunice Friesen. She is on our garden planning committee, and it's been wonderful to have her, so she's gonna be sharing this presentation with me. And I'll be presenting the Children's Memorial Garden. So our mission is to surround families that have lost a child from conception to adulthood with the beauty of nature, life, and hope, a positive place where they can reflect, honor, and feel a sense of community. Our vision is to create a positive space for families, friends, school-aged children, nurses, first responders, and all those affected by the loss of a child, a place where they can celebrate, honor, and remember their little one they miss, a garden that will bring life, hope, healing, comfort, and a sense of community. It all started with a walk back in 2013 when we started Tiny Hands of Hope. The walk on average hosts 500 to 700 individuals. Um, that afternoon, babies are, the, their names are read, uh, written on the sidewalk and recognized in one afternoon. Uh, when we first started the walk, before we started the walk, one of our ideas was to create a garden, um, a tulip garden, which we didn't end up doing. So we moved to our next idea, which was give each family a shrub, which they can then take home and build their own personal garden to recognize the child that they lost. And also we received a small plaque near the amphitheater where our walk is held, and that was donated by Bear Creek Funeral Home. The shrubs were donated by GP Landscaping. And we did that for the first two years, and it failed because of our harsh winters the shrubs just died. So not only did the families lose their child, but the symbolism that was meant to be part of their child that they lost was lost as well. So as you can imagine, it was really heartbreaking for many. So that's when we moved on to our next idea. And so we quickly realized that we needed more and that something was missing in our community. And it was during this time that I learned about the loss of Emily Nath, an eight-year-old that died unexpectedly in January 14th. As you can imagine, this was heartbreaking for Emily's family and many in our community felt the impact. I met Emily's mom, Elizabeth, and though our losses are very different, we are both moms who have lost a child and our love for our children united us. I remember Elizabeth saying that Emily's classmates and educators didn't have a place to celebrate Emily's life 
until a bench was built in her honor near Swan Avon School. And that's when her little classmates and educators were to, to visit Emily. We, for, can, we can forget that a loss of a child doesn't just affect the family, it impacts an entire community. And as the years went by, just being part of this lost community with Tiny Hands of Hope, I realized that it wasn't just Tiny Hands of Hope families that were suffering, it was families outside of Tiny Hands of Hope as well. Like our sweet Hadley, age four, died of cancer. My friend's sister, Charlie, age 15, and most recently, a really good friend of mine's 14-year-old daughter died, Andy. So I connected with compassionate friends, and together we shared our idea of the Children's Memorial Garden to honor all those children, <clears throat> those we carried but didn't get to meet, those we held but didn't get to bring home, and those that came home but didn't get to stay. Thank you. In 2017, the partnership was formed between the city of Grand Prairie, Tiny Hands of Hope, and Compassionate Friends, and a community foundation where the Children's Memorial Garden sits today. We have tremendous support from our community, and we just are so fortunate to be part of this uh, Grand Prairie. So, as adults, we're very used to going to cemeteries to remember anniversaries and special days with lost loved ones. Families in Grand Prairie and area are not burying their children. As you may know, I own funeral homes in Grand Prairie, Fairview, and Peace River. And the fact is that over 90% of infants and young children in our care are cremated and brought home to rest, leaving families and the community with no place to go. An Australian study by the Compassionate Friends found that three years after a loss, parents' unmet needs were very specific. They were to be listened, they wanted to be listened to about their dead child, to have anniversaries acknowledged, and to connect with support organizations. This garden meets all three of those needs by providing a gathering space that encourages conversation, and it allows connection with support organizations and awareness of the organizations like Tiny Hands of Hope and Compassionate Friends. This garden gives mummies and daddies, brothers and sisters, grandparents, aunts and uncles, and friends in the community a place to go. So this is our Children's Memorial Garden. It is located between uh, the new hospital as well as Royal Oak subdivision. It is adjacent to Muscatay Park. Uh, it's most of us parents call it the dinosaur park. So the yellow spots that you're looking at are the existing structures. The darker parts, the darker green is the new is the garden, with the purple uh, indicating the blooming trees that will be placed there as well. And to date, we have raised two hundred and twenty-six thousand dollars, and these are some of the costs associated with the garden and part of the reason why it's taken so long, plus a two-year pandemic in there, that we had to pause our fundraising. So while we have several beautiful installations planned for this garden, including a family of geese, and the uh, father goose is on the um, pins that we handed out. But we have several beautiful in installations. Um, one is specifically dedicated to indig Indigenous children whose lives were lost at the hands of colonialism. This is indeed a place for all children. The Hole in the Sky by Indigenous sculptor Grant Berg is a representation of the constellation now known as Pleiades. The Hole in the Sky offers a portal to free spirits from their forgotten graves and guide them in returning to where they belong and it will be represented in a sculpture as bright as the constellation itself. And these are some of the grants that we have applied to and are either pending or have already uh, received funds from. So community enhancement grant uh, matching up to 125, uh, the co-op community spaces that we did a reverse bottle drive. So we have been actively raising money for the garden and we are committed to completing it this year. These are upcoming grants that we have that we have coming up and are applying to or events. Uh, one of the ones that is is most recent is a Stompede Gala that chose us as their main charity of choice this year. And the next steps is to set a date to break ground, uh, also naming the Children's Memorial Garden. And what we are looking uh, for from you today is funding to cover a couple of. Uh, 
four things that are listed in the budget that was handed out to you. Your contribution to the project will allow us to compete, complete the pathways and trash bins, allowing us to fully complete the earthworks, landscaping, and some sculptures of phase one, two, and three from the garden. This garden doesn't just benefit families who've experienced loss. A 2012 report to the World Conference of Psychology and Sociology highlights the positive impacts that projects like this have on urban communities. While you, monuments tend to become a part of the background after a while, human sc scale designs like this leak into our daily lives, thereby having a more powerful and lasting impact. We presently don't have a place to go, as I mentioned. We have, um, we have the cenotaph and we have the, um, the memorial over by the Anavets. We have different things, but nothing right now that represents one of the most tragic and upside down losses that society experiences. One of the most interesting findings, sociological findings of memory sites is that they don't just touch residents of the community. In fact, visitors develop greater empathy and more positive impression of cities who have sites like this. I can't think of a location in Grand Prairie that is more visible, alongside one of our busiest roads, across from the Visitor's Center and the Northwest Poly Northwestern Polytechnic, and visible from the patient rooms in our regional hospital. I've come to, to understand that the social and potential economic return on this investment or the project is far greater than I anticipated when I first got involved, and I think that you see it too. Please support this garden with a grant for $54,768. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. I appreciate uh, the very thorough presentation and the information on the budget. I will open it up to Council for questions. Um, and if council could leave, have the questions for the delegation, and then we'll deal with administration questions, et cetera, when we get to the delegation portion of the meeting. Uh, first in the queue, Councillor Bosch. Man, I am hitting it hard. Today. You are. I'm number one. You're every quick on the draw time. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. I appreciate uh, what your purpose is here today. I do understand this intimately, and. Um, I commend you for what you're doing. Uh, my question to you is this 54 plus dollars that you're looking for, if the grants that you applied for were awarded plus the Stompede Gala, would that, what would you do? Like, is there dollars, these dollars attributed to something else? Or are you planning to use this, like, for what? We can we can get started immediately with, with it. If the 54 is, uh, we can get it now, we can st get started immediately. Some of the grants we don't get until, we don't find out if we qualify until June or July. So that would delay our project. So that way we can get started right away with groundbreaking, create the pathways, the cement pads, all of that purchase. And then we can move on to the fully pay for the landscaping. So, so can I ask you if this was granted and then the dollars do come in, what are you going to use those dollars for? Are you going to increase your, mm, your scope? Or? I don't think so. I because I, if, if we get a grant in July and we don't need it, we just won't take it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, just a question: um, If there's people who choose to honor privately, do you do anything for those families? Like something as simple as a candle or something that they can do at home? Listen, I've done the tree thing. Mm -hmm. for people and it's turned out exactly the way yours has turned out mm -hmm. so i get that that doesn't always work so tiny house of hope does so tiny house of hope the scope of our society is from pre pregnancy to infant loss so for our group and i know compassionate friends i wish elizabeth was here so she can elaborate on what she does we, at our walk to remember which is at the end of september Families get a little candle, uh, they get a little goodie bag. So on October 15th, uh, we get together. Usually it's in person, but the last couple of years it's been virtually. And it's just a little tea light, you know, the battery ones. And you, we do what we call a wave of light. But and they that, have to attend first. I guess what I'm asking oh, is if from the hospital, you could get a list and, you know, reach oh, out to people. No, we don't get a list from the hospital. That would be a FOIP. Pro, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they we get we they they were provided with them and provide them information at the hospital, 
uh, brochures and a tiny hands of hope did set up a parent bereavement fund for families that lose infants at the hospital uh, and Kim is actually here and she's working closely with the hospital foundation to make sure that our families are provided for there and then in time when they're ready to reach out to us some families don't want to talk to us right away we do have a monthly support group that they can attend plus a self-care so there's different things that they can plug into when they're ready and Perfect. we do offer one-on-one -on -one if they are not if they don't want to be part of a group because some families don't feel comfortable being part of a group either great no, you answered the question perfectly in regards to whether it's VoIP or roundabout getting to them. You're, you're yeah. doing that, so that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, sure. Thank you, Mary Clayton. So the, the, uh, the garden is a partnership between the two organizations that independently provide ongoing and continuous support as needed by parents who are fresh in grief or who are now ready to reach out to them. This is a, um, a separate and independent capital project. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councillor O'Connor. <gasps> Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Thank you so much for coming in. Sorry. Do you, the tissue box? Do you want the tissue? <laughs> we got some here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't help but not be moved. And uh, I really support your, your project. And my two questions are in regards to ongoing maintenance. Do you have you plans to set up a reserve? We will be talking with Community Foundation in regards to that that recently came up. Uh, but as soon as the project is complete, the maintenance will be taken over by the City of Grand Prairie Parks. And uh, with we do have a guarantee on the trees and shrubs and perennials. With GP Landscaping, they will guarantee it for two years. And I know that as of right now, an agreement is being drawn up to protect both parties, uh, Tiny Has to Hope, as well as the city of Grand Prairie. So that is being ironed out. Yeah. And my second question, God forbid, have you got room to expand or is... Sorry. <laughs> you have to talk about it. So do you, do you have room or is it just... It, it's a, a one for every citizen, doesn't matter when or how. Uh, are you, I'm not sure I understand. Are you recognize I, like you don't have to add more area on as the question I'm asking? Uh, well, the city has given us the lot that we are working on, so we, we're staying with that space. Uh, we recently did add a phase four and phase five, so our trees are now going to be around the garden area. So we wanted to set up blooming trees, uh, trees that bloom. And the reason behind that is uh, it's a Japanese proverb that uh, blooming trees, a blooming garden, it means a short, beautiful life. So initially we can only afford a short strip, but um, we were able to cut costs in the shrubs. So we added trees to keep going along the, line, along the path. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, Councillor O'Connor. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Clayton, and thanks for coming in, ladies. Uh, always great to see each of you uh, in whatever capacity. Thanks for uh, showing your heart, and uh, this is a long time coming, six years or longer. Yeah, we're coming up to almost a decade. Yeah. <laughs> it's six years. It's all good, six years. But for me, I, I know this dream uh, started, started well before that. So I guess my question is, uh, going over your budget here, I noticed that there's a line that says uh, municipal funding for ten thousand uh, dollars. Was that from the county. city, from the county of Grand Prairie? Mm -hmm. Okay, no, great to know. Um, yeah, I guess that was my question, so mm -hmm. I'll leave it for the rest of my peers here to ask. But I think the garden's a great idea, and I think, and I can't wait till it's fully in bloom and people are gathering around there. I know I will be. So thank you. Thank you. I don't see anyone in the couch. You. I'm just going to ask one question. Um, I know that informally you and I spoke about community group funding. Were you able to connect with administration to uh, see in regards to the process of applying for any community group funding? I don't remember that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then I'll leave my questions for administration. So thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, anyone else before I let these ladies go? 
Seeing no one, thank you so much for the information. Thank you for coming tonight. And as I mentioned, we do unfortunately for you have three public hearings before we get to delegation business. And at that time, council will ask uh, administration uh, any questions. And I will at that time also get council up to speed on previous motions that were made by prior councils. So, um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you. Councillor Burke to come back in. And now, uh, moving along in our agenda, item number 13, there is no unfinished business. And moving to item 14, under public hearings, the first public hearing for tonight is in regards to transportation system bylaw C-1452. And I will turn that over to Ms. Coulter for introduction. First, I always forget to do this. I will call the public hearing to order, and then I'll turn it over to the introduction for, by administration. Ms. Coulter. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. My computer just locked me out real quick. Well, I'm here today to present the Transportation System Bylaw. The Provincial Highways Development and Protection Act requires that city, by law, city Council, by bylaw, establish a transportation system in accordance with a transportation study report. In August of 2020, Council adopted the City's 2020 Transportation Master Plan, resulting in the existing transportation system bylaw, bylaw C-1265C, becoming outdated. The transportation system bylaw being proposed today reflects the current transportation network identified in the Transportation Master Plan, the MDP, and other relevant city documents. All of these plans, studies, and documents have undergone extensive stakeholder consultation and review prior to their acceptance. This bylaw does not present any new information or roadway concept that has not previously been identified publicly, or uh, that has not previously is not previously identified in publicly available city documents. Uh, acceptance of this bylaw will bring the city back into conformance with the Provincial Act and have our transportation system up to date. Um, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Great, thanks for that, Ms. Coulter. So just to clarify, uh, Council obviously already approved the Transportation Master Plan. This is just a formal process for us to align with the Provincial expectations, correct? Uh, yes, that's exactly it. The act is largely administrative between the province and the municipalities as far as the transportation system is defined. Okay, great. Thank you for that. So open it up to questions um, for council. I prefer them to not be opening up the transportation master plan type questions, but um, happy to uh, uh, with <laughs> and certain people aren't allowed in the queue right now. And yeah, seeing no one, I would now ask if there's anyone here to speak in support of the bylaw. I will ask three times. So a second time, if there's anyone here online, no one in the room, to my knowledge, to speak in support of the uh, bylaw of the transportation system bylaw C-1452. And a third time, if there's anyone here to speak in support of this bylaw. I will now ask if there's anyone here to speak in opposition of this bylaw. If you're online or in person to speak in opposition of bylaw C-1452. And a third time, asking if there's anyone here to speak in opposition of this bylaw. I will now declare the public hearing closed and look to business arising. Councillor O'Connor. Yes, I would move that uh, bylaw uh, C-1452 be adopted by, is it, no? That's all right. Uh, I think you're fine, Councillor O'Connor. You just need to have pass a motion to give first reading to the bylaw. Well, thank you very much. I don't have that on my queue. Thank you very much. I move that uh, Council give uh, first reading to bylaw C-1452 being the transportation system bylaw. Perfect. Thank you for that. The motion is in order. There's no discussion or debate on first reading. So I will call the question. Please vote. Thank you. Uh, Council One second. That carries unanimously. Councillor O'Connor. <laughs> Mr. Eager here. 
um, move that council give second reading to bylaw C1452. Uh, Perfect, that motion also is in order. An opportunity for discussion, questions, debate. Seeing no one in the queue, I will call the question. Please vote. I will not. There's double voting, I mean. That carries unanimously. Councillor O'Connor. Yes. Uh, have City Council, Council give TAV's third reading of bylaw C1452 at this meeting. Perfect. So this is a motion for us to be able to have third reading here tonight. It must pass unanimously. I will, seeing no one in the queue, call the question. And that carries unanimously. Councillor O'Connor. Yes. Uh, Council give third reading to bylaw C1452, being the transportation by, uh, system bylaw. Perfect. That motion is in order. So this is third reading of this bylaw. I will see no one in the queue, so I'll call the question. And that carries unanimously. All right. Thank you for that, Ms. Coulter. Moving on to item 14.2, housekeeping amendment, which is a uh, housekeeping amendment by C-1260-146. I will give Mr. Roche a minute to get set up. Uh, for at this time, I will call this public hearing to order. And whenever he's ready, look to Mr. DeRoche for introduction. No rush, whenever you get there. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. So proposed bylaw C-1260-146 is a series of housekeeping amendments. We're okay? Yeah, go for it. Thank you. So planning and development compiles a list of housekeeping items on an ongoing basis um, in order to improve clarity, uh, correct um, erroneous references and things like grammatical errors or typos. And so we bring these amendments forward on a quasi-annual basis. So we typically do it about once a year, uh, but there's no set schedule. Um, as I said, uh, these are kind of the reasons why we would do this type of amendment. And for this particular series of amendments, the first item is deleting section 12.3. 3.K, and this section indicates that any application for a development permit within a direct control district would be referred to committee before going to council for a decision. Now, this is a statement that's a uh, holdover from an older version of the land use bylaw uh, back when all the DC items went to council and went through this process, whereas now we state specifically in each DC district the development authority for the different uses. And so this creates some contradictions within the bylaw and some procedural issues. So we're removing the statement for greater clarity. In section 13.2, we're adding a statement explaining council's responsibilities when acting as a development authority. Now this doesn't change what their responsibility actually is, but it wasn't written in the land use bylaw before, and it's good in terms of clarity to have it within the bylaw. That way, both council and applicants can know what to expect when council is their development authority. And it also creates that expectation that in certain cases, council may end up being a development authority because there are a number of ways that could occur. And in some instances, the development officer can simply refer it to council. In other areas, such as direct control districts, is specified within the district. And so this just creates that expectation when you're looking at the actual process within the bylaw for development authority. Uh, revising section 49, section 49 refers to home businesses and we were encountering challenges when someone was coming in with a home-based business that involved a mobile element. And so the example I give in my report, I believe is windshield repair. And so the idea here is say someone came in for a home-based business 
where they had maybe their trailer parked at their home and they had a home office associated with the business, but they weren't conducting any of the work on site. It wasn't clear whether or not we could approve them because the nature of the business itself was prohibited as home-based. And so we provide clarification on that, that the activities can't occur on the site, but that they can have an office and some storage the items that fall within the allowable parameters. And so this one is specifically to improve clarity for anyone applying and processing uh, a home-based business with a mobile component. Uh, the, section, the next one is an amendment to section 50.1. And these are the general lighting provisions for all districts within the land use bylaw. And so there were some, um, there was an instance where there was some debate about people less, with people who are less familiar with the land use bylaw about whether or not the lighting section applied to all the districts because the statement saying that it does apply, that the general regulations apply to every single district is in the beginning of the general regulations section. And so we're adding this at the beginning of the lighting section as well just to improve that clarity. That way you don't have to look back and forth to the bylaw to be certain as to what districts this statement applies to. And then the, the following few are to correct some outdated reference. So the, the change to section 14 is just, it refers to an older version of the subdivision and development appeal board bylaw. 95.4.E um, .E refers to residential and mixed use buildings within the commercial arterial district and that use is no longer allowed in that district so the reference no longer makes sense. In 104.2.C it refers to the community growth committee and we've generalized any reference to committee within the land use bylaw um, to simply committee that way when the committee name changes we don't have to update the whole land use bylaw every time but we missed that one on the last round. And then in Schedule B, Section 2.B by I, we are, again, generalizing the reference to the fees and charge by is bylaw because it referred to an older version of the bylaw. And like with the committee references, we've created a generalized reference so that the whole bylaw doesn't need to be updated every time that name changes as well. Um, and so these amendments are part of our ongoing housekeeping efforts to correct any potential typographical or referential mistakes, improve clarity, and generally just improve the land use bylaw. Administration is recommending that council have and give all three readings to the bylaw. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mr. DeRoche. I um, will now look uh, to see if there's anyone here to speak in support of this. I, um, am I, um, yeah, I'm right? Sorry, I will ask council if there's any questions for administration. I assume because it's housekeeping and we all want things tidy that there won't be questions, but I could be assuming wrongly. Councillor O'Connor. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mayor Clayton. Um, is this a place where we had this home base? Is this the bylaw with, which would consider development for home based businesses? So and <laughs> I knew you were going to ask this. Okay, so this is. If you're very clearly just cleaning up words, okay. if you want to revisit the land use bylaw, that won't be here. Okay, perfect. I will take my question back. Thank you. But I do think that if you have concerns and questions about the land use bylaw that you reach out to Director Glavin, if it warrants a full council discussion, then we can do so. Okay, thank you. No problem. Councillor Larners. Yeah, I won't be too. I'm, I'm just clarity on process because I... <laughs> been a while so you were talking about direct control and I thought when I took my Muni 101 course it and I think you reference it here so I just need some clarity because I'm new this so direct control zonings the approval of the zoning and the approval of the development on that zoning comes directly to council or is it to the development uh, the, the development um, administration mr. DeRoche thank you through the mayor so any Amendment to the land use bylaw, no matter what it is, will go to council because it is a bylaw, and that includes adopting or changing a direct control district. However, a development application for something that falls within a direct control district does not necessarily go to council. Um, the default is typically to the development officer. However, within a direct control district, we will specify who processes the application. And in many cases, at least recently, we have been directing them to council. Okay, so what, what do you use as a guideline for saying we can do this or we, or we want council to do this on direct control? How do, how do you, what, 
But Spidey senses go crazy when you say, "Oh no, we, I'm not taking this one. I'm going to council." Or how do you how do you decide that? Just curious. Let me to answer that. Or would you like, Mr. No, I <laughs> Mr. Garosh? Sure. Um, through the mayor, so um, you may get a different answer depending on what planner is processing the application. So something where the direct control district is based on restrictions to the site, um, where it's got like a, an unusual shape or dimension where it can't meet the standards of other districts, will typically direct to a development officer. It's somewhat more rare that we would be directing things to council, and those typically tend to be highly contentious uses. Okay. So, again, so you you decide whether it comes up, or could we could we as a council say we want to deal with that one? I don't know how that works. Is that, well, I don't even know that's a possibility. Go ahead, Mr. DeRoche. Through the mayor. So, council would be approving the... Div, uh, the bylaw amendment to create the direct control district. Right. Yeah. So when they're considering that district, if they are unhappy with how it is being referred to a development authority, um, they could choose who it is being referred to. They could also at the choose time of to zoning. Appeal it. They at, could, at, if they don't like the develop the decision of the development authority, the development officer, they could appeal it. Then it would come to council. Then it would come to okay. That's what I just, I'm good. I understand the process now better. Thank you. Am I wrong, Mr. Deroche? That if they didn't like the opinion of the the decision of the development authority or the development officer, then in turn they could appeal that, and the appeal would come to council. Um, yeah, this, um, to the mayor. So appeals on direct control districts. Um, so I'm trying to remember the exact procedure. Not on the not on the DC application. But on the development application, right? Um, would be considered by. Um, the Subdivision and Development Appeal Board. Right, okay. Not council. But as Mr. DeRoche mentioned, anything that tends to be contentious comes to council. Yeah. All right, good. Okay, good. All right, so now I'll just see if there's anyone here to speak in support of this bylaw amendment. I will ask if there's anyone online or that I can't see in front of me <laughs> here to speak in support of the bylaw amendment. And a third time, I will ask if there's anyone here to speak in support of this bylaw amendment. Now I will ask if there's anyone here to speak in opposition to this bylaw amendment, a housekeeping amendment. A second time to see if there's anyone here to speak in opposition to this bylaw amendment. If you're online, please turn on your camera. And a third time to see if there's anyone here to speak in opposition to the amendment of bylaw C-1260-146. I will now close this public hearing and look to business arising. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Uh, I actually chimed in to speak in support of this uh, motion, so I'll just make the motion anyways. Uh, I would move that Council give first reading to bylaw C-1260-146 being an amendment to the land use bylaw. That motion is in order. There's no discussion or debate on first reading, so I will call the question. Councillor Bosch, how do you vote? Councillor Bosch votes in favor. And that carries unanimously. Councillor Thiessen. Thanks, Mayor Clayton. I would move that council give second reading to bylaw 1260-146. It's the second reading, so an opportunity for discussion or debate on this bylaw. Seeing no one in the queue, I will call the question on second reading. Councillor Bosch votes in favor. And that too carries unanimously. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I would move that council have third reading at this meeting uh, for Bill C-1260-146. This is a motion to have third reading here tonight at this meeting. It must pass unanimously in order for us to have third reading here tonight. I'll call the question. Councillor Bosch votes in favor. And that carries unanimously. Councillor Thiessen. All right, to finish off business, I'd move that council give third reading to bylaw C-1260-146, being an amendment to the land use bylaw. 
Thank you. And that motion is in order. Seeing no one else in the queue, I will call the question. Please vote. And that carries unanimously. All right. Thank you, Mr. DeRoche, on that one. Moving along to the Rural Service Area Land Use Bylaw Housekeeping, C-1260-151. I will call this public hearing to order and look to, for uh, introduction from Mr. DeRoche. Thank you, Mayor Klain. Um, so yes, uh, C-1260-151 is another series of housekeeping amendments, but specifically geared towards our rural service area. So the rural service area is uh, an area of land that was annexed from the County of Grand Prairie in 2016, shown on the map here in green. Um, it was, and so the area of land is currently under the county's land use bylaw as it was in 2016. And we are in the process of amending our own land use bylaw and rezoning these properties in order to accommodate them within the city's land use bylaw to simplify and clarify our process uh, and to facilitate development more easily. Um, and so we've completed the first round of land use bylaw amendments, adding a series of use definitions, specific regulations and zones to the bylaw to accommodate these districts. The next phase will be rezoning the properties. And this amendment is a number of improvements um, resulting from a review that we undertook before heading into the rezonings to address anything we may have missed. And so in addition to this, when the previous round of land use bylaw amendments were adopted related to the rural service area, council made a motion directing us to bring back uh, a review of the handicraft business definition. And that was presented to committee in February. Uh, and we were directed to bring forward an amended definition to that use. And we've included this along with these other improvements to, to simplify it into a single bylaw amendment. So the current definition of handicraft business is that it means the production and selling of handicrafts on a commercial basis. Uh, both council and administration found that this definition was a little too vague and didn't provide enough clarity to differ differentiate it from other uses, such as d general industrial that would include manufacturing and also potential associated uses like classrooms or retail space. So the proposed revised definition says that handicraft business means the production and selling of handicrafts on a commercial basis. Handicraft production is the creation of custom products in limited quantities by hand or with limited automation. And this use may include associated product display, retail sales, and instructional classes. So the proposed changes would address that lack of clarity in the current um, version of the definition and address uh, council uh, committee's direction. The additional changes include um, an amendment to section 88 a.4, and this is on the number of allowable accessory dwellings. Um, and the challenge here is that um, the county addresses garages and accessory buildings separately, whereas the city addresses garages as accessory buildings. And so that led to some confusion in the interpretation. So in the county, you're allowed to have a garage and two accessory buildings. And so the way it's currently written, you're able to have a garage and an accessory building. And so this amendment clarifies that you can have a garage and two accessory buildings like you are allowed to under the county's bylaw. In section 96.8.4, it's to correct a typographical error in the naming of what we call a recreational amusement park. Um, it had a different version of the name from a previous draft of the bylaw. In sections 102A.4 and 102A.5, we're adding some missing uses that should have been included in that district that were deliberately left out of those different districts in earlier drafts of the bylaw, but were added later on and in the definitions, but were not added into the district where they should have been. And then Schedule B, Table 1, is the table that addresses what types of signs are allowed in what districts. And the new um, rural districts were not included in that table. And so this amendment also adds those districts to this table so that we are able to process sign applications in these areas when they are zoned. Um, so the proposed changes are to improve our regulations related to the rural service area and the land use bylaw. Uh, administration is recommending that council have and give all three readings to this amendment. Thank you. All right, thank you for that introduction. I will ask council now if there's any uh, questions or concerns in regards to this. Questions for administration? Seeing none, I will ask if there's anyone here to speak in support of this bylaw amendment. 
We'll look online as well to see if there's anyone here to speak in support of this bylaw amendment. And a third time to see if there's anyone here to speak in support of the Rural Service Area Land Use Bylaw Housekeeping C-1260-151. We'll now check to see if there's anyone here to speak in opposition of this amendment to the Land Use Bylaw. A second time to see if there's anyone here to speak in opposition of the amendment to the Rural Service Area Land Use Bylaw Housekeeping C-1260-151. And a third time online or in person to see if there's anyone here to speak in opposition of this bylaw. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and look to business arising. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Clayton. I move the council give first reading to by, bylaw C-1260-151, being an amendment to the land use bylaw. All right, that motion is in order. No discussion or debate on first reading, so I will call the question. Please vote. And that carries unanimously. Councillor O'Toole. I move that council give second reading to bylaw C-1260-151. All right, opportunity for discussion or debate on second reading of this bylaw. Seeing no one moving too quickly or in the queue, I will call the question. And that carries unanimously. Councillor O'Toole. I move that council have third reading of bylaw C-1260-151 at this meeting. Thank you for that, Councillor Tool. That is a motion to have third reading here tonight. In order for us to have third reading here, it must pass unanimously. I will call the question. And that passes unanimously. Councillor O'Toole. I move the council give third reading to bylaw C-1260-151 uh, C being an amendment to the land use bylaw. Thank you for that. That motion is in order. Seeing no one in the queue, I will call the question. And that carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. DeRoche. Moving on. Uh, Item number 15 of our agenda tonight, delegation business. As we recall, there was one delegation here tonight, Ms. Gillickson, and um, in from the Tiny Hands of Hope, as well, um, Ms. Friesen. Uh, and I will now open it up for questions for administration and look for business arising. Councillor Berg. Mayor Clayton, I just think I should excuse myself once again for Perfect. perceived or potential conflicts. Thanks for that, Councillor Berg. Councillor Berg will remove himself from the chamber, and then I will look to Councillor Bosch. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Um, you know, I love this, this society for what they're doing. Um, I'm just curious, with the grants not awarded at this point, and the Circle the Wagons Gala in just over a week, um, giving money to this society, uh, I, I wonder what the appetite is to, to defer this decision till next council meeting. Um, I would hate, uh, you know, we're responsible for dollars regardless how big or small they are of, of the public. So I just want to do our due diligence in regards to making sure that, not that we don't want to give the money to great organizations, but are we doing it wisely uh, financially? I don't think you're looking for an answer for that question. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to the next person in the queue, and if you choose to comment on Councillor Bosch's uh, question in the process, feel free. Councillor O'Toole. Uh, so my question is, if we were to go ahead and say that we're going to give them money, would we wait th through to fall budget, or wouldn't we be able to find some money uh, currently in... Someplace. Well, 
typically we don't just find money. No. Um, but um, I'll look to Director Trim, possibly on uh, recommendations of potentially where this funding could come from if council were to approve it. Through the mayor. Um, yes, if council chose to fund this um, today, the one of the potentials could be council strategic initiatives fund. There are funds available uh, within that pot. Um, there's also the unrestricted portion of the future expenditure reserve that could be utilized um, for something like this. That's all I wanted was some information. Okay, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, maybe I can uh, help everybody out and we can put a motion on the table and then discuss and debate that. So I would move uh, the council direct administration to bring a report to the appropriate standing committee uh, in regards to the Children's Memorial Garden and identify any potential funding sources uh, that could be used in, in this regard, I guess. Uh, speaking to this motion, um, I've, I heard what uh, my colleague said, uh, that we have, we have potential uh, funds that we have in reserves. Uh, we might have a surplus. We still have to talk about our, our last years. So, I mean, there might be that. There's Council Strategic Fund. Um, Councillor Bosch uh, mentioned that, you know, are we getting value for our money? And the way I see this this project, honestly, is it's going to be right down at the base of our new recently opened regional hospital. It's actually developing a park for us, a space of beauty, a space of congregation that we can all go to. Uh, and at the most, it's costing us land and $54,000. Um, the reason I, I'm not making a motion to fund it outright directly today is because obviously there are some questions and I'd like to see what those answers are and I'd also like to see time play out be between that next gala and the next council meeting and when we'll have two more council members here as well to potentially discuss and debate it if it gets through committee. Um, so for all those reasons, I encourage uh, members of council to pass this motion and then we hopefully can get our answers uh, at the next committee meeting. Thank you. Right, so that motion is in order. I do. I just wanted to provide a little bit of background for those who may be new um, or weren't aware. In 2017, it went through com uh, committee and to council to designate the land. The land is still the city's land. Um, you know, it's it's our land still. They're just hosting the memorial garden on the city's land. Uh, since in then in 2018, a letter was sent from the mayor's office to Tiny Hands of Hope. Um, in basically at a high level in an agreement to work together on the planning of this um, operations, the parks operation department at, um, has nothing official in writing, but there is an agreement that we will maintain the site in um, mowing, et cetera. Um, one of the questions I would have, and maybe Director Glavin knows, and if not, we can find out from the association. Um, the plan comes to fruition, the park's fully operational. Um, I'm assuming any replacement on benches and trees after the two year um, warranty period are the responsibility of the association. And my second question would be the um, insurance costs of you know people obviously playing and observing and enjoying the park. Um, who's responsible for the insurance and the replacement of any amenities? Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Uh, regarding the replacement of any of the trees or shrubs on site, uh, there isn't a firm agreement on that that I'm aware of, so that's something we'd have to work out with them. Uh, regarding the maintenance, that is an area that we already maintain right now, so as far as the actual mowing, um, weeding and that sort of thing, that won't be a significant burden on staff as we're in that area already. Uh, regarding the insurance, I don't have that off the top of my head. I'm not sure if the city clerk might know or if that's something we'd have to bring back. Okay. If I, I see Ms. Karbyshewski. Go ahead, Ms. Karbyshewski. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I don't have that information at hand, but I, I can um, get that for you. Okay. If you could provide that with the other information for the next appropriate standing committee, that would be great. Okay. Or an email, whatever's easier. Um, I think that, um, you know, those are valuable pieces of information um, because it is not their land. I don't think they'd be able to have the insurance. I don't know. But so those are some things of consideration. I, I will support Councillor Thiessen's motion. I think coming back to the appropriate standing committee for discussion is, is, um, diligent and uh, um, it allows 
the, um, as Councilor Bosch mentioned, time to see how the next fundraiser goes for them. Um, this garden, I think, will be beautiful, a great addition to the land that's already there, but I just don't like to leave things untied. And so, you know, there isn't a gift and kind agreement for the use of the land. There isn't a land lease per se. There isn't a lot of that sort of tidied up stuff that, in my opinion, should be there in order for us to have this agreement. So um, it's just some considerations for administration as we get to closer down the road of this discussion. Councillor Bosch. Thank you, Mayor Creighton. Um, I am in support of this motion. That's exactly uh, what I wanted is just a little bit of time to defer till we got some decisions, uh, whether it's through finances and insurance or uh, maintenance. And I do appreciate what the city has put in for um, a garden like this. It has a lot of impact for a lot of people. And so, yes, I will support you. All right, so we do have a motion on the table. I will ask now if there's any comments or questions, further comments or questions on the motion. Seeing no one in the queue, I'll call the question. And that carries unanimously. It will give us a minute for Councillor Berg to come back in the room and we'll move on to Councillor Council Member Reports. And I will start with Councillor O'Connor this week. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Um, I'll try and keep it brief. Um, we attended the Aquaterra uh, shareholders meeting, uh, attended a Zoom meeting of the neighborhood forum. Uh, we went to the Sandman Hotel opening and uh, hometown hockey with Ron McLean. That was wonderful. Uh, Alberta Provincial Police Transition Study, uh, that was great. And the highlight was with uh, uh, Councillor Brussy and I had Adventure Day Camp and had 34 kids come into council chambers and we did a mock council meeting and uh, Dylan did an excellent job and the kids were twitter painted. So uh, went to the Bear Creek lineup and uh, Big Hearts, Big Kids, Tenille Towns rocks, and they did a great job. Thank you. Thanks for that, Councillor O'Connor. Councillor O'Toole. Yeah, we, uh, I was involved with a couple of meetings. I was with the Decoy Community Association and discussing the hub project. And uh, with everything goes well, we should be uh, almost ready to start uh, getting serious with the building, with the funding and all that. Uh, we uh, also, ha I had also a combative sports commission meeting today. And with that being said, we have a promoter that uh, is applying for a license uh, with the intention of having an event here uh, within the next four months or so. Uh, commission is also going to Edmonton to take some training uh, is because it's been two years since we've had some events. Uh, there's some important things that need to be re revisited. So with that, uh, we'll be taking a number of people with us, our commission members, and then we'll do a train the trainer when we get back for the people that uh, we're not taking. And uh, we just took a tally of the people going to Niagara Falls this year to the... Uh, uh, Association of Boxing Commissions. Uh, that's uh, probably the most important conference that uh, that I will attend uh, as a commission chair uh, for the combative sports. And uh, I also went to a number of fundraisers. Uh, I went to the Ukrainian fundraiser at the church across from Peace Wapiti School. Uh, waited an hour and a half for my pierogies. Definitely well worth it. And... Uh, uh, I don't know where them people come from, but man, they just, wallets were open and people were there wanting to just support. And so with that, I appreciate uh, having the opportunity to support the Ukrainian community. And with that, I will, oh, we did do the uh, chamber event at Revolution Mazda. I was hoping that that wouldn't be too long, but I know a guy that owns that and he kept me there a little bit longer than I wanted to be. But anyhow, that was a great uh, uh, event, 
And uh, we did meet as an accessibility committee meeting and we're talking about uh, uh, a number of th uh, events that we're gonna be hosting this year. And uh, one of them is chair leaders. And I would encourage my council members to partake in that this year. Uh, whether you make it through the entire day or not, it is an awareness day that you need to understand. And so with that, I will leave with that. Thank you. Thanks for that, Councillor Thiessen. I mean, O'Toole. Uh, Councillor Berg. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I count nine different events since we last had council. I'm just gonna focus on three and leave a few on the table. But the Bear Creek Folk Festival lineup announcement happened uh, this past weekend. Some of the headliners, Steve Earle, Serena Ryder, Corb Lund, and the Trues. Of course, I always like to promote local artists and advancement. Um, and so many local bands and solo artists are also part of that folk festival. So it's great to see. Speaking of local talent, and also it's kind of on theme. We had two delegations present today about homelessness and addiction. Um, so Tennille's Big Hearts for Big Kids, raising money for the Sunrise Youth Emergency Shelter, raised, rounded $450,000, which is absolutely amazing. The weekend before, I was at the Rising Above uh, fundraiser. That is in support of residential treatment right here in Grand Prairie. They raised $220,000. So again, helping those people that are uh, suffering through a, a number of life challenges combined, the two events raised six hundred and seventy thousand dollars. So hats off to the community and to the organizers of these events. Absolutely, thanks for that, Councillor Berg. Uh, Councillor Thiessen. Oh, you don't mean Councillor O'Toole? I thought I just got better at Kim. <laughs> At least if you would have called me O'Toole, I would have improved. But uh, yeah, no, I was. It was great. I was. Um, I was at a lot of events actually this this last couple of weeks, and uh, you know it was such a thrill to help out uh, doing the spotting as the auctioneer uh, ran off the numbers as the bids were coming in for both uh, Rising Above and their Hope Lives event, and also for Big Hearts for Big Kids, and then previously the weekend before for Tiny Hands of Hope. So that was all good. Um, but I'll talk about a few things that that other people weren't here for. I had a Grand Spirit Foundation meeting last week, Friday, where we went over, um, you know, the, the basic stuff. We went over our budget, uh, and we approved our audited financial statements and a couple housing projects out in the Spirit River area, just a couple changes to that and updates from Amin. As well, on uh, March 24th, uh, I was with the Mighty Peace Watershed Alliance here at the Grand Prairie Museum, uh, where we did similar things, except we didn't approve audited statements. We did approve our finances at that point um, and decided to do what we were going to do with the surplus as we've been carrying it over due to COVID. Uh, luckily, the province said that we could we could fix that in there, so we made it work. Also part of the Mighty Peace Watershed Alliance, uh, it was World Water Day on March 22nd, uh, which I took part in in a webinar on groundwater, making the invisible visible, uh, where we had uh, some excellent presentations by First Nations people, a chief uh, from out in the Yellowhead area, uh, talking about uh, how water is, how we're losing water and our access to the water and how we need to be um, aware that, you know, we can't separate ourselves from, from water. And I think that's a First Nations tradition that we're, we're in with all the elements. Yeah, and Grant's drinking it. You know, 70% of your body is made of water. Yeah, you didn't know that. Maybe you did. Uh, but, yeah, there was lots of other stuff. There was a protest here. I don't know if you saw the vandalism of chalk uh, down in the parkade, but uh, the Ditch the Draft uh, curriculum draft was, was here this weekend, and I, I was able to be there and help facilitate uh, those voices uh, who were... I guess uh, not very happy with our with our proposed curriculum for kindergarten through grade six people, so it was all right. But I'm going to say this, because I wanted to talk about Rising Above, and Grant took it. I want to talk about Big Hearts, but we're all talking about it because they made 450 grand. But the biggest highlights of my week this last two weeks uh, came sitting on my couch, of all things, you know? Uh, and it's it's really seeing your friends and your peers, seeing their dreams come true. The first... The first was Doug Eady on the Monday night when we had hometown hockey. I asked Doug prior to the event, are you going to get on TV and make Grand Prairie famous? He's like, oh, yeah, that's the plan. 
And sure enough, you know, in the second intermission, there was Doug Eady dancing, and he even got a shout out from Ron McLean, so I was really happy for him. And then later on in the week, on Friday, I had nothing to do during the day. I had lots to do in the in late afternoon, in the nighttime, but I was like, oh, I'll watch TV. I don't normally watch TV unless hockey's on, uh, but I just happened to click on a live broadcast of from the Vatican, uh, where I saw our local, um, I, I guess, Order of Canada, uh, living legend uh, Angie Creer walk in onto the stage and take take a front row seat in front of the Pope. Um, now, I only mention this because I was one of the first, I don't know, probably 50 or 100 people to find out. I was definitely the first on council to find out that she got the call to go and do that. And the first person I called was Mayor Jackie Clayton and said, oh, my God, I got the best news for you. But what I asked Angie was, okay, so you're going to the Vatican. You're going to see the Pope. What do you want out of this? What's the big thing? She said, you know what, Chris? This is a dream come true for me. What could only make it even better is if I could see him apologize to us for all the bad things that happened. And to turn on my TV and to see my friend Angie Carrar live out her dream from the front row of the Vatican while the Pope gave an apology, an official apology to the First Nations people, just, I don't know, it's made my 2022 already. So to Angie and to all the people negatively impacted by residential schools, I know how much that meant to you and it meant a lot to me. Uh, just to, not only to see a friend a witness a dream come true live and in person from a front row, but for all those people that were impacted. So I'm so happy and I can't wait to hug that lady when she gets back to town. That's all I got. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, Councillor Bosch. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Yeah, I saw Angie uh, on several um, news broadcasts. You know, she spoke at times and, uh, you know, right beside the Pope. So good for her. It's it's amazing. Um the seven things I had written down have all been talked about. And, you know, in saying that, I have to say that um, I'm super impressed with this council for all taking part in whatever they can in the community. Um, we're doing it together. And um, that shows solidarity and um, that we have, um, you know, a goal to, to make sure that we're out there. So thank you to everyone there um, for going. And I guess... The only thing that probably nobody else did, well, I could have seen them or maybe not, was uh, I had Dine in the Dark on Friday night. And that was um, a little catering company, a uh, business called Mud Puddle. They're starting a new um, venture. And this was the the first one that they hosted. And so that's exactly what it was, was you, you had... Uh, blindfolds on and you dined in the dark and it was uh, it was intriguing not only do you get to understand with people uh, have to go through with um, certain disabilities but it was fun and uh, they didn't tell you what you were going to eat it was all a surprise so um, anyway people should uh, give it a chance if if not for uh, themselves or a gift to someone else and I do look forward to the cherry leaders I, I have done that once and um, it was a it was a really good learning experience, basically on that same vein as, as uh, Dine in the Dark. So, um, yeah, that's it for me. Thanks for that, Councillor Bosch. Councillor Larners. Well, if I ever needed another job, I could, I, that'd be a place I could cook at is, is Dine in the Dark, because <laughs> none of my stuff turns into anything. Anyway, uh, one of the advantages of being last, you can just the big ditto. But I, I wanted to clarify a couple things. First of all, you know, not only do I like the mayor, I like all of you. <laughs> Every one of you. I really do. Oh, how soft of you. And, you know, and last week there, so I went, you know, I, I want to thank Councillor O'Toole for taking over for the uh, for my committee while, um, while I went off to the Northwest Polytechnic President's Awards. It's always... Uh, I, I enjoy the the fact that we celebrate individuals in our community that are doing great things. So thank you for that, and uh, and that was good. And so, as um, you know, deputy mayor, woo hoo, with the mayor gone, woo hoo, you know, you got to do lots of stuff like you know hometown hockey and the Sandman Inn. And I was telling everybody that I knew if you had a had a you know parking ticket or speeding ticket or you wanted your taxes reduced, bring it on down. That's what I do. And then I found out that only happens on a blue moon, on a leap year, and about 400 bylaw amendments later, uh, we can make that happen. So something we should consider. Uh, but, you know. And uh, what else? Uh, 
yeah. So anyway, we're off to a uh, bunch of us off to Kananaskis this week. Hopefully, we learn lots, uh, make uh, make a city proud, and hopefully by the time I come back, I can spell the word Kananaskis because right now I don't think I can. And that's all I have. All right. Thanks for that, Councillor Lanners. Uh, yeah, as mentioned, a lot of great events happened recently. Kudos to the um, Rising Above group as well as the um, Big Hearts for Big Kids volunteers who um, continue to amaze me in the money that they raise for that organization. I had the opportunity with CAO Nicolay to have a telephone conversation with WestJet, um, the Grand Prairie Airport's largest customer on their future plans and 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 uh, what um, is on the horizon for them. As well, I had a, a Mid-Size City Mayor's uh, meeting and, and that group, 22 Mid-Size Cities across the province are getting geared up to come to Grand Prairie and be hosted by us in the end of May. So that's extremely exciting. Also, Councillor Bosch, you did do one other thing that you failed to mention, but I'm happy, so I have something on my list. Uh, Councillor Bosch and I, in her other capacity, had a conversation with TELUS in regards to the opportunities for improvement in our downtown core and what their plan for digital looks like in the city as we've heard on a few occasions that it's happening however we haven't seen a lot so it was great a lot a uh, great opportunity for uh, myself and um Councillor Bosch in her downtown role to get an update. Also today I had a call with Mayor Dale Bumstad from Dawson Creek and Mayor Lori Ackerman from Fort St. John um, to just touch base again. As you recall, I had a conversation with them prior to Christmas of opportunities for collaboration on everything from advocating to CN to um, discussing the lobby groups that each of us report to in the province and, and our roles within the peace country, whether it's um, advocacy, whether it's uh, education, whether it's um, um, really just bringing the importance of this uh, region to the front lights, uh, forefront of everybody's mind. So it was a great conversation and, and there is more to come on that that I'm really excited about. Speaking of CN, I had a, a conversation with a local business owner as well as the executive director of Alberta Forest Products Association in regards to our concerns and the role of CN in this region. Currently, this region is being serviced by approximately 30% less rail cars than, than are on demand. And so uh, as a service that is intended to serve the entire country, it uh, appears to be um, of shortcomings to this region. So you'll hear more from that through Alberta's Forest Products as well. I intend to bring this up at our next uh, advocacy discussion because I think it's of extreme importance. I wanted to say um, thanks for bringing up uh, Angie Crehart, Councillor Thiessen. had an opportunity to uh, meet with her in person prior to her leaving, present her with one of our special, uh, unique Indigenous um, buttons that she took to wear in front of the Pope. And so it was great. I was so happy to see her on TV and, and it was very special, you are correct. And last but not least, I wanted to thank Councillor Laners and everyone around the table for picking up a bit of the slack while I had an opportunity to get away over spring break with my family. Um, it was um, a great a two-year-old vacation that finally came to fruition, so it was great to get away with my family. And oh, I will bring it up again, Sunday from 1 to 5 at the Activity Reception Centre in the Smith Subdivision. Hope to see you all there and come out, meet Council, maybe... Uh, talk to John about how he's personally going to reduce your taxes and, um, and uh, come out and say hello to us. So thank you, and I'll call this meeting adjourned.